you do this thing and it fucking drives me bananas. Okay. Where all you do is you want to say, I don't want to stand for anything because it's harder for you to defend a fucking position. So you're going to keep saying, well, haven't I told you, you sit, you, you create a framework. So no, this is what you're doing. You're saying, sit, you create a framework so I can sit here and tear it down like a fucking neo-Marxist. I'm going to deconstruct everything you're doing. Sitch. Let me deconstruct everything. And every time I've I say, and every time calls. I say, what are you constructing? You change the fucking subject. That's why I literally in this very stream, I've given you policies that I would implement if I had. And and then I said, and I said, if, if those are the policies that you're implementing under a liberal framework of liberalism, why the did we spend the entire part of this conversation earlier talking about why liberalism doesn't work? You're talking about, I don't think, I don't think, I don't think. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Do you know about can't Dave? Kant. You mean Immanuel Kant? Immanuel Kant, yes. <laughs> well, I haven't heard it pronounced that way, but German, <laughs> German late enlightenment <laughs> philosopher, yes. categorical imperative, dude. Yes, Kant can't. But um Everyone would he knows lie? That Kant would, bot, right? would he be against uh lying to Nazis about Jews hiding on the floorboard because lying is wrong? Yeah, that's very famously. I mean, I know there's caveats where Kantians can escape that. But that mm-hmm. was one of his uh, very famous derivations, uh, supposedly from a categorical imperative that you couldn't lie to an axe murderer who's coming for your wife who is hiding in the basement. That sounds Again, I don't retarded. Think <laughs> I think it's one of those extreme examples. Mm-hmm. I don't think that serious Kantians actually uh, okay. embrace good. that. But it's sort of like uh, the, the joke they tell about Thomas Aquinas arguing over how many angels can dance on the head of a needle. I don't know. That I've joke. heard it's 1500. What's the joke? The, the later, later enlightenment philosophers joked that Thomas followers of Thomas Aquinas spent inordinate amounts of time arguing over ephemera that had no practical applications to earth. And mm. the example they gave was how many angels can dance on the head of a needle. I see. I see. I understand. So that's uh, it, these these sort of joke examples, right? Right, right, right. Anyway, how are you doing today, Dave? Uh, doing fine. Uh, it's a little early for me. I just got home from work, so you know, but I can't complain. Awesome. So, how are you guys doing? We're doing good. We're uh, great. We watched Philosophy Tube justify violence on Sunday. Uh, well, that so guy's that fun. Well, I can't call I can't call Philosophy Tube that guy anymore, <laughs> but. Is that uh, entity? He's still doing uh-huh. this thing. I haven't, I haven't really thought about it oh, for yeah. about a year. Philosophy Tube's still going strong. Uh, she just got paid by the UK government to release a pro-vaccine video. So, you know, <laughs> wasn't so. there this whole thing about the CIA and and like them? Yeah. So we YouTubers? we were talking about that. Uh, Caleb Moppet and Max Blumenthal very ridiculously are trying to claim that bread tube because. Here's the problem, and I, I I assume you're aware of this. You have you have like the Jimmy Dore types and the Max Blumenthal types who are these mm. class reduction Marxists who they want to label the woke cultural Marxists as like liberals and fascists because that's all that's that's like their main attack is to call people liberals and fascists. Yeah, and they don't want to take responsibility for this all being you know neo Marxist garbage, and so they're like, no no no, BreadTube is really funded by the CIA and blah 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 blah. So it's dumb. Well- I mean, no one wants to own the wokeness stuff, right? Yes. The liberals say it's all the communists and the communists. Well, it, listen, liberals. it is all the communists. Okay. If you want to say it's <laughs> infiltrating the liberals, I would agree with that. But it doesn't come from liberal uh, dogma. I don't know, man. The, 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 this, the, this, I mean, I'm not going to say that the Marxists don't have their fingerprints on it as well. Uh, but this stuff did not come I mean, they from created Moscow. it. I don't know if you want to say it's just their fingerprints. I mean, you know, uh, you know the, I'm sure we're going to get into this, right? But... You know, this wokeness stuff, this wokeness stuff arises from very particular conditions in the West and very particular crises inside of liberalism that emerged in the early 70s. Uh, There's actually a blogger called Richard Hanania who's Mm -hmm. just going over this. Pardon? What is a what what is the the focus of the discussion that you want to have? I feel like wait, 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 I want to bring up a Chiron. Wait, 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 Okay. Is it difference between saying that some system creates a condition where something can arise and some system literally creates the philosophy of something? And so yeah, well, 
right? Well, and yeah, so that's, obviously, that's a good the, distinction. Yeah, and so the philosophy of wokeness is entirely created by a neo-Marxian perspective, and not a liberal perspective, and not a liberal. It's, you're it's just saying you're basically saying that the liberal perspective allows it to exist, but right. that it exists on its own through its own philosophical. Well, it's all creation. it's all critical. It's a, it's an anti-liberal. It's saying liberalism sucks. Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess you can make a distinction between the 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 spore the spore that that spawned the mushroom and the soil and then the the damp conditions that were not kept clean that allow the mushroom to 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 grow right yeah yeah uh i yeah i think that's, i know you that's... don't want to make a distinction necessarily no i'm i'm perfectly fine making okay, a distinction okay. as long as we understand that the way i mean this is the thing i mean in order to keep mosquitoes like you know dank still water does not this is not spontaneous generation right if you have a bunch of dank still water that does not cause mosquitoes to spontaneously appear nor does exposed meat cause maggots to appear mm -hmm. but the solution to a mosquito or a fly problem is not to exterminate all mosquitoes and flies it's to get rid of dank solid still water and exposed meat uh the thing is, is that the the conditions that were that were really in in the, the, that I'm talking about in the early '70s, they created things a necessity for some alternative ideology to come in. This was the one readiest to hand. Well, yeah, I mean, you got to be careful because you can get rid of that dank water by bleaching it, and if you use too much bleach, then everything's gonna die. <laughs> we're gonna well, use yeah. our war of metaphors here. I, mean, I guess I, well, I love metaphors. You know, I guess the thing I wanted to talk about is, well, well, other well than the, the Twitter last drama, time right? you came on, yeah, we got, well, we had some the fallout. Tweet, the tweet that spawned this conversation was you said that someone was sending you clips that we were straw manning the right. And I assume when you mean right, you mean the weird, excuse my French, the wackadoodle French, <laughs> right? Uh, criticism of liberalism. Well, I mean, so, so I guess like I could give you, I mean, I don't know if you really want to get into like how you straw man me. I think that's kind of a ridiculous conversation. Did you say because, you, or I thought you said we were straw manning the, like the general critique of liberalism from the far right. That, yeah, yeah that I think, I think you're not, I don't think you accurately understand the criticism. Uh, the, the criticism, I should say, this is a growing criticism that comes from a lot of different spheres. Well, before you say what the criticism is, what were we saying? Because I don't remember half the shit I say on stream. So. Well, th this is the problem is like, this is actually what I don't want to do because I mm -hmm. can like go and find places where you misrepresent what I was saying. But I'm pretty sure that the answer I'm going to get is you're a comedy show. <laughs> so so why don't- I don't remember that, you that's telling such, you. That's that, you straw manning like, us. Dave, but no, wait, I don't remember you we, saying it's that. Not, it's not Adam, right? Because well, like I've I caught don't... a lot of misrepresentation from you and it, you know, it's hard to draw a line of where the jokes begin and where the serious or where the jokes end. Point it out then, point it out then. We don't, we don't make jo jokes that are direct lies so, unless it's completely obvious that we're just fucking joking. So, and most of those well, jokes I don't are know, between... why, why don't, as an alternative, why don't we just state our positions? The thing is, what I would like to do, you know, what I was hoping to accomplish is that you can sort of restate the argument, restate my position about liberalism and its flaws so that it's clear that you understand it okay let and, me start. and also conversely i'd like to be able to restate your guys's position on liberalism because I, i've tried as much as i can to sort of lay it out for myself and it never to me i can never get it to make sense and that's that to me I that's just, a problem okay. i mean I, i'm fine i'm fine i don't want to misrepresent your position i just don't i feel like i just don't care about this like very theoretical philosophical dispute about whether liberalism will work foundationally that you're putting forward like i don't even agree with the framing do, do you care that this provides a, a prediction that the kind of moderate centrist liberalism you're trying isn't going to work very well i don't think it does that's the whole thing i, I think okay, i don't but, agree well, can, with that framing can, can I take an all. example of this like let's take an example of recently mm -hmm. right so like recently you did a a live stream and i watched this one all the way through and this was actually a really fascinating text, but but not really an unusual one. This is where Andrew Sullivan came on the John Stewart show. Yes, I don't even know what the show is called, right? But he basically the gets problem ambushed. with John Stewart, uh, which is aptly named. Yes, and the problem is white people this time, right? Yes. 
Okay, well, so Andrew Sullivan, who was the conservative guy who pushed gay marriage and was actually just an Obama era progressive. Mm -hmm. Well, he's he's gay himself. I know, I know. He promoted, I mean, he is a conservative, but Mm -hmm. I don't really know what that means because there was really very little space between him and what came out of the first Obama administration. Well, uh, so I don't know what you mean by that, but. I mean, that Andrew Sullivan wrote a blog that promoted all of Obama's policies and really got behind most of what his talking points were. This is irrelevant. I'm skeptical of this, but but continue. I mean, for instance, Obama lists Andrew Sullivan as one of his favorite blogs, uh, too. If you're, that's also something that's, uh, but no, this is apropos of nothing. Mm -hmm. Uh, This is not relevant. The, The thing is, is that, Andrew Sullivan gets ambushed by this woke conversation about white supremacy and white privilege. And I can tell a lot of people were surprised by that. Certainly Andrew Sullivan was surprised by this. Uh, This sort of woke turn is the most predictable thing in the world. And the futility of Andrew Sullivan's arguments against it is also incredibly predictable. I've lived in Northern California, and I think I can see, I remember conversations like this having almost an identical nature to the one that happened between Andrew Sullivan and Jon Stewart. I remember those happening back in 2006. Obviously in Berkeley, that happens a little bit earlier than the rest of the place, but these conversations have a predictable form. They have a predictable villain. They have a predictable set of responses from the conservative that immediately get dismissed. And another thing that's predictable is that if you were to see one of these conversations take place in your university or your HR department, what side wins? What side does the establishment you know, listen to after this conversation goes forward and give more money and power? Uh, all, all these things are predictable. The answers Andrew Sullivan gives are always dismissed. You know, No appeals to Martin Luther King's by the content of our character are, mm-hmm. are ever entertained. And, and, and you know, the, the machine continues apace. And I don't know, like, what is that? That seems to be a big problem for liberalism that this has been going on for so long and nothing has changed. Okay. I, is, was there a question? I'm, I'm lost. There wasn't a question. I'm saying okay. you, I recognize this as a problem. I guess that's the question. Is, is the problem that when you say nothing, you mean what race stuff hasn't changed? Has there been enough progress? I'm saying that the, these arguments are mm-hmm. not swaying anybody. These arguments <laughs> that Andrew Sullivan's <laughs> put forward what do you mean? I mean, they I, they're not swaying the people in power. And they've, no, I'll give you. I mean, been, I that's been the framework. That's been the like, framework of American thought since the civil rights era. What are you talking about? You mean you mean the woke stuff has been the framework of this thought of for the civil rights? Era? No, the woke people lost the civil rights era. Why do you think this has been underground and keeps resurging? Okay, like okay, locusts well, every thirty years to get beaten down again. Okay, but let's let's put the finer point on it. Okay, so there's this one part of this conversation. But wait, but you you no, I want to make that, this right? point because I th- no, I don't, and I think I can show you how it's not. okay. Okay, um, so so when you were reviewing this mm-hmm. conference, so Andrews for the people in the audience. Andrew Sullivan uh, basically did the whole Martin Luther King. You know, we have to judge Ada Burning as individuals by the right. by the content of our character, not by the color of our skins. Right. And you guys repeated that like 10 times. Yes. And then then I, I was crying and saluting when he said it, by the way. Okay, but but then there's this weird part of the video, right? Mm-hmm. Where you you wonder why everyone's kind of scoffing at the Martin Luther King quote. And you said you speculate that the reason but... why people mm-hmm. are tired of this is that Republicans incorrectly used it to critique affirmative action in the 80s and 90s. So the, so the question is, and that was 30 years ago. So were the Republicans wrong to say that affirmative action violated that core civil rights principle of by the content of our character, not the color of our skin? Or were they right? So I said, I, didn't, I wasn't wondering. I said, I said the reason, the part of the problem with my speculation about John Stewart here, and part of his issue, is that you now it could be that John Stewart is totally captured by wokeness and has totally gone inside. But if I'm going to give him any charitability, I'm speculating that he's stuck in the mindset of the 80s and 90s and early 2000s, and that he thinks because, as as you said, the Republicans did use that Martin Luther King line as sort of a sledgehammer to try to hit against affirmative action policies. 
Okay, and, were they right or were they well, right? Well, but, but let me just finish. And right now, like when we watched John Oliver, who was criticizing the same thing, he had a bunch of clips of Fox News pundits saying, you know, that line. He's acting like the same thing, like this is the 90s or the, or the 2000s, and that's what the Republicans are doing when they're not referring to affirmative action. They're referring specifically to critical race theory policies and critical race theory theory, which posits that, you know, black people and white people uh, should should be judged on the content of their, not on the content of character, but on their race and should be viewed in this fashion. And they're saying, whatever happened to the civil rights union, civil rights movement with Martin Luther King Jr. saying this. OK, but so they're responding I, to two I, very I to different very things. Question is affirmative action in keeping with the idea that we should judge. Well, people uh, no, I'll, I'll answer the question. But but you you acknowledge that they're. There's very two different principles that are happening. I don't there. acknowledge that those are two. So you think affirmative think action? That, wait, you think I think, affirmative I think action one, and CRT is the same thing? It's not the same thing, but there are the, the assumptions behind them are identical. Which and once is, you once you acknowledge that you can essentially give set asides and preferences to one side or the other to accomplish the greater goal of diversity, then I don't see how the logic of of most of the woke policies we have to stem right from that. Okay. Like is disparate no. impact right. law right. also is another example, right? right. Like is disparate this protected classes, is that in keeping right. So okay, Martin well no, I'll answer, I'll, disparate let me answer impact law. Let like, me I'll answer all the question. from the 70s, right? So I'll answer the question because affirmative action and CRT are fundamentally different in that the belief behind affirmative action was still within liberal principles of we want to work towards a colorblind society, but in order to get us there to redress past grievances, you know, the black population in America needs a little bit of a, a stepping stool, a foot up to get them on some sort of even playing field that we all want to get to. It's all based around working within our framework, within our structures of our society. Well, CRT, not really, because- No, but wait a minute, it is. And CR CRT is the exact opposite. CRT is saying, no, 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 you can't work within the system in the framework of our society, that all has to be torn down because that was created by evil white racists and everything that's created by evil white racists is, you know, fruit of the poisonous tree and we need to get rid of it all. We need to implement some sort of weirdo race neo-Marxian ideology. This is completely different okay, from but, affirmative but, action. But the thing is here is that you're, so you're saying that, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're saying, you're saying that a policy that basically is the exact diametric opposite of the literal words Martin Luther King said is still in keeping with those literal words and a, a law that or our practice it's not the that vi what uh, violates the it violates the 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 what would have been a plain language interpretation of the 14th amendment i mean like i i, I understand that this is in the service like the, the idea of affirmative action was that we were going to temporarily institute racial quotas mm -hmm. and we were going to temporarily have this sort of disparate impact law and these and these sort of hard-handed measures to increase diversity in violation of sort of the plain language interpretation of the 14th amendment and the, the literal words of of that you keep on quoting here you know uh the the i mean it literally contradicts it um you can it doesn't you're not judging what on the content the of the character said. you're judging on the skin uh and that's just a fact i'm you, sorry you understand he like, said he dreamed of a future okay oh Okay, great, but you know, but th but then he's not saying right this moment there should be. He was in favor of affirmative action policies. While he was alive. But, but you, but you know, all of these critical race theorists, they say the same thing. They're saying that we're doing all of this stuff so that we can get to a post-racial future. This no, is they're not. Service. They're not. They're saying the opposite. They don't want a post. They don't think a post-racial future is even possible. I, I I think that this is. They don't think a post. They don't think a post-racial future is possible under liberalism. No, they think a post no, 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 future no, no. Possible post -revolution. no, no, that's Derek Bell's whole thing. That's his racial. Re he literally calls it like racial realism. He doesn't think a post racial future. CRT does not think a colorblind future is achievable, period. End of story. Not under any system. I've never met a follower of his that did not think that their ultimate end was. And that's what they say in all you of the just read the works. They all say it. It's pretty clear. Okay, so so your point is, as long as the end is justified, then we can violate the principle to That's achieve it. That's not my it. point. That's not my point. I'm saying that there's a fundamental, this is what we're talking about, is there a fundamental difference between 
you know, the liberal ideas of civil rights that came out of the civil rights movement versus the CRT and the woke neo-Marxist ideas. Okay. And there is because the liberal idea again, which Martin Luther King Jr. was big in favor of was we can change things through reforms within our liberal system in our system of individual rights. And that's why things were categorized by him and the moderates in the civil rights movements as being, we need rights for black people. And that's why the okay, leftists like, now say, we don't, they don't want, they don't talk about rights for black people. They talk about revolution for black people. Affirmative and action and set asides are, are not the beginning of what we would classically consider individual rights. They're set asides for groups. And yeah, the whole yeah. system of protected classes. Right. I mean, we can classify that as individual rights, but, but no one before 1970 would have thought of that as individual rights. And, and I think that, you know, if you, if you listen to the people who originally created this stuff, like affirmative action, mm-hmm. they did not, they, they sold this as a temporary right. measure, a temporary bending of the rules. Mm-hmm. They understood that this was not part of the rules. So that Yeah, they understood it was this. outside the framework of liberalism and individual rights. I agree. Okay, so this, this is what kind of creates, I mean, this is sort of what, I mean, this is not the only crisis in liberalism, but this is sort of what's and I, I know I mentioned this on my, my previous stream. This is what is currently bringing the crisis of liberalism to a head. Is that it doesn't make the, any sense, though? I don't think you even heard what I was. Okay, I'm I sorry. said you this, continue. and then I I'll even, let you finish. I'll let you finish. <laughs> the, the the problem is, is that you know these these were meant to achieve a level of racial parity and equality of racial achievement, and that has not been like we haven't achieved that. And it's been sixty years, and so the only solution is to kind of keep on doubling down with more set asides and, and more strenuous measures that, that basically go against liberal principles and piecemeal, or, or it's to admit that we, we can't achieve this or we made some kind of mistake. And, and the difficulty is that we just haven't been able to fulfill the promise that people made in the civil rights era. And because of that, we can't justify the exceptions we've cut to our, to our own rules. Affirmative action was a breaking of rules that we thought we had in place with regards to a completely racially neutral government that was supposedly, the, like I said, the literal plain language word of the 14th Amendment. Right. So, and yeah, and, and, and it was a breaking of the rules in order to get at this, you know, this end. Right. But, but this so, end is like, mm-hmm. this, this is stretching across three generations now, right? It, it, it's, it's stopped, mm-hmm. like no one thinks that this is temporary anymore. Because there are people who've lived and died under this regime and there's no end in sight. Like racial achievement gap hasn't moved since the 80s. So th- there's two different issues that I think we need to separate. And there's one of whether affirmative action works or makes sense, like theoretically, you know, in the theory of liberalism and individual rights and in America, like what, we're ta- what we were mm-hmm. talking about and whether it's working consequentially, whether it is actually going to physically work in the real world, which I think we need to separate that. And we've been talking so far about kind of like, does it match our country philosophically and theoretically? And the reason you I mean, would say, like the, the liberal concept of our country. Yeah, the lib. Okay, the liberal concept of our country, right? And where I would have contention with what you said is that what you're saying would only make sense if America went from being a colorblind country to a country that instituted affirmative action, but that's not the reality. America wasn't a colorblind country. It was a co- it was a country that literally had black enslavement baked into the law, and then on top of that, then had black separate second you know class citizenship baked into the law. So it's not I like we were coming that's... from the great everyone was under the banner of liberal individual rights, and then we suddenly fucked it all up with affirmative action. It was we never had that. It was just a principle that was never actually implemented in our country fully to black people. And this is this is where the radical right wing in, in me comes. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. believe that just because we want something means we can necessarily have it. Uh, okay. Things like okay. this could be just fundamentally unachievable. Not that they wouldn't be nice to have. Not that if I had a magic wand, I, I wouldn't wave it and, and accomplish them or something. Uh, but but just because we want something doesn't mean it can be accomplished. And, and I'm looking at the me. I mean, like I don't know. I mean, like what you know, this thing doesn't appear to be working. Uh, for, furthermore, uh, I guess this is the thing, like, well, we're kind of getting into the problems of liberalism. We're kind of exposing the problems here. Well, no, but, that- but go back to the, because you're making, you're making <laughs> argument about how it, it, it ruins the framework, the philosophy of, of liberalism. But you can't say that when the country wasn't operating from the, that space in the beginning. 
it has to do something to address the harms and address the and address the fact that it wasn't living up to its principles. Now, whether affirmative action will actually work or not is another story. I don't know if it will, but it well, doesn't you, break you the, say, philosoph- that, like, it doesn't break the philosophy of liberalism in America just because we have affirmative action. I mean, oh, sorry, we've been doing it for 50, pardon me. You say that like we haven't been doing it for half a century. That's, that's why I said, I don't know if it will work or not. Well, I, I think it's shown very little evidence of, of fixing the underlying problems in this case. Yeah, on its, obviously and, on its own, it doesn't seem to have fixed anything, sure. Okay, but, but, but the, what then happens is the people who are in charge of fixing this problem go, mm-hmm. okay, well, you know, obviously this isn't working, so we have to take it another step, right? We have to do more disparate impact. We have to crack down more on this stuff. Right, and, yeah, and of like course. They keep on, and they mm-hmm. keep on relaxing liberal principles and expanding. You yeah, know, and that's where these... you say that's where you say no. We're not doing the slippery slope. We're stopping here. Yeah. Okay, but th- then you're. I mean, so then what? The, the 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 problem is is that you know we made this problem this that's not being fulfilled, and that that's really. I mean, and 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 it, it seems like all of this effort has gone to a great waste. And, and moreover, the, the a lot of the benefits we have, not a lot of the gains we have made. Mm-hmm. Like if we got rid of affirmative action, they would bleed away instantly. And, you know, I mean, th- th- that can't be discounted. I, I guess I'm not, I'm not clear exactly what, what you're saying, except that affirmative action doesn't work, which is neither here nor there, in my opinion, in this conversation. But oh, what, what I'm saying is like your current uh, major and, you know, uh, if, if anyone wants to read up on this and, and I'm not nearly as eloquent as I should be, mm-hmm. but I would really direct them to the blog of Richard Hanania, who's, who's another sort of liberal progressive, but who's kind of like taken a turn on sort of the more right-wing direction recently. And he, he and this is also covered by Christopher Caldwell's Age of Entitlement. What, what's driving most of this woke stuff is, and I know I mentioned this last time, it's it's people essentially uh, demanding that, that, that basically parity be met in certain situations. Mm-hmm. And, and then, you know, it's not clear exactly what power can't be taken in order to ensure that. So you have bureaucracies just making up the rules as they go along and, and, and basically latching on to this academic theory that allows them to justify those new rules. Yeah, so like, let's problem, say you want yeah. a new, if you want a new workshop where mm-hmm. you charge people $3,000 to get lectured and, and no one, no one, and no one comes in afterwards and goes, well, did this lecture actually increase minority enrollment in this engineering firm? Well, I mean, you know, guess what philosophy is going to be really, really uh, conducive to, to, that, um, to that perspective. Like it, it's going to be the, the stuff that was developed by these, what you call Marxists, uh, really quite, I think, intellectually confused. Marx was definitely an influence, not, don't get me wrong. Uh, they they latch onto that because it perfectly allows them to capitalize on the, the legal conditions that we set up in an attempt to to solve this unsolvable problem of of rate, race, demographic parity inside uh, our leadership classes, which no one's been able to achieve, other than like literally manipulating the scales. I mean, I I would agree that part of the reason I think. <clears throat> a lot of the woke stuff is spread is because unfortunately for a lot of institutions, uh, they're sort of incentivized directionally into woke garbage because, and and this is what I think is going on, especially with our politicians is a lot of the, like, especially CRT and stuff, a lot of, since all this kind of neo-Marxian race shit are really, they're really the blueprints to create bombs to blow up our society. And you know, the people like, you know, teaching the, the classes on this, maybe they don't understand, but the people who wrote this understand exactly what it is they wrote. They're writing bombs to blow up our society to institute some kind of weird socialism or Marxism that they want to implement. And because of that, the philosophies and the academic, academic literature is written in such a way that it's so vague and nebulous that no real goal or accomplishment or change can actually be shown to manifest. And they but do that, that that's actually what makes it attractive. Right, exa- exactly. Exactly. That is what that, makes that's it what makes it attractive. I to agree. These commissions, right? Because because, because they they're, they're looking for something where, that they can ask for a grant for, 
that doesn't have to actually show results. Exactly. At the end of it. Exactly. They they want they don't want to have to show results. Neither do the corporations. They don't want to have to show results. And neither the politicians. They don't want to have to show results. They want this vague, nebulous shit that they can just kind of keep in the ether and say, we're working on this problem that no one knows how to solve and can never really manifest. Okay. So yeah, no, I agree that that's, that is the problem that the incentives are in that negative direction. Sure. But I don't understand how that's a critique of liberalism at all. (laughs) I think it's just a critique of because because we've we've undermined, I mean, we've undermined all sorts of liberal principles to, to get to this point. Right. Mm -hmm. We've told people that, you know, uh, for instance, like we're implementing differential punishment of children based on race yes. certain yes. schools. I mean, you, right. We are on, you're right. Uh, you're mining like, liberal principles. That's, okay. That's the and problem. like, you know, pe- yes. people are talking about sentencing, sentencing reform that's racially targeted. I right. mean, you know, like these, it, it started with sort of unequal protection of the federal government uh, uh, with, with affirmative action, which it's definitely unequal protection. I don't see how it's not, uh, you know, if you, if you if you give loans that are only available to some races, or you you massively prioritize some races into positions of power, uh, aside from a neutral standard, that is not equal protection no, in I, anything yeah, I the way that the people who originally wrote that right. law thought. And so, um, and so the 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 thing is, is that um, we these are these are I mean liberalism in order for it to work, and this is sort of getting into my larger critique, there's two things that are sort of needed. People need to have a moral system that keeps them strong and independent and sacrificing for the future. And there also needs to be a set of rules or cohesion in society that stops them from grabbing power at the at the highest level. Uh, there, there's a reason why liberal democracy does not work in Iraq or Libya. And, and, it's, and it's some combination of those two principles. And, and everyone who did this understood that. Uh, the problem is, is that when you open the floodgates to this kind of government expansion or expansion of act, and that's not just government expansion, it's activist expansion across the board in both government and in the private sphere. You've allowed people to basically flout the rules that we usually use to control political movements and prevent them from becoming absolutely out of control, uh, funded fanaticisms that take control over the entire government, which, which this ideology apparently has at this stage. Mm-hmm. Well, so if I understand your argument is you're saying that basically affirmative action was like, the, it like is the slippery slope, basically it chipped away at something that has allowed the neo-Marxists to take advantage of that chipping away. Yeah. That- I mean, yeah, uh, sure, sure. So for instance, I'll give you an, I know you don't like examples and I, I know I'm proposed. But, you know, for instance, uh, habeas corpus, which is a core liberal pl- principle, was mm-hmm. suspended in the Civil War and it was suspended in World War II. Right. Uh, the reason why that didn't completely implode liberalism is that because after the war, they brought it back. Right. And they and they made assurances that this was just a one time thing. And then that's fine. Right. Affirmative action probably wouldn't have been disastrous if it had been kept around for five, 10 years or 20, maybe 30 in a pinch. Mm-hmm. But it's, it's like going on 60 now. And, and no one thinks this thing is going away. It's just become a fixture of our society. And moreover, it's become a model of how you can expand government preferences to particular racial groups and fund activism on the behalf. I mean, it's not even on particular, it's not even like funding activism on the behalf of particular racial groups. It's funding activism to lecture certain racial groups on why they're bad or are on just plain religious ideology at this stage. Uh, yeah, I, I, that, that I, would have I violated agree. all principles before civil rights, but because we said, okay, we're making an, an exception, you know, in, in the late sixties and the exception was never closed. Now, now that's just how our society operates. And so any attempt to control the politicization of, of basically all elements of social life, which is critical to liberalism, just kind of flown out the window because of that. I don't agree with the slippery slope uh, conceptualization of affirmative action because the slippery slope, it's only, it's only a slope and it's only slippery until someone stops something from going in that direction. And since our country was founded on li- hypocritically founded on liberal principles, but also enacted horribly anti-illiberal principles of slavery that didn't destroy, you know, the fact that we had slaves in our country didn't 
prevent our country from becoming, you know, a liberal country or even act acting as a liberal country in many respects, as long so, as you remove that element from it. So I don't see so how you can say be, that there's this, like, once you chip away at this, you know, something that's slightly illiberal comes into being that suddenly all the pieces tumble away. Cause that's not what our history has shown us. I, this, and all the, the CRT people, like a lot of them are pretty, like their position on affirmative action is basically that they like it because it helps them get into institutions of yeah. power, but they don't think it actually works. So they have a very cynical like of it too. So they're not well, really. Well, you might notice a pattern. Yeah, you might notice a pattern such. It's not affirmative action in particular they don't believe works. They don't believe anything works. Every single thing is always. This is just a tiny step, but there's still so much of more course, to do. Of course, they want a revolution. They want to tear everything down so nothing can work. And, and they also, well, I mean, I don't know if they're really aware of the, I mean, I'm sure that some of the radicals who create this stuff. The people who may have are writing this that, literature are but, aware. Okay, but that's not what's sustaining this process. What's sustaining right, this process are people incrementally trying to seize power and money yes. at, at every step of the process. And so- I mean, the, the 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 incentive is to keep the gravy train coming. Mm-hmm. Now, I need to, this thing about the slippery slope here. I mean, you are, the slippery slope is a, a logical argument. It's saying like, if you take 69 steps, then you're not going to take the 70th. Or if you take a thousand steps, you're not going to take the thousands. And right. But like, you know, the, the slippery slope, if you over apply this to, to sciences that are statistical, you can use this to argue against like the sun rising tomorrow, right? I mean, it's just like, it, it, it's it's it, at the level you're using, it's just an argument against pattern recognition. This has been going on for 60 years and every year these people capture, capture more money and more turf and get more grants funded. You know, it, once you see some a pattern continue on and on and on and on to the point where you can predict it, then that's pattern recognition. And just because the pattern isn't logically necessary, doesn't mean that past behavior can't be used as a statistical mechanism to predict its continuation. And it really what we're looking for right now is how does this thing stop? And, and nobody knows how this thing stops. Like how, what are the practical off ramps to actually, you know, shut this process down? Mm-hmm. So before, I mean, there, before the same logic just accrues more space right. and territory. So there is a pattern that I said earlier that we definitely seem to be seeing, which is that, I don't, I guess it maybe it's a generational thing that every 30 years, this shit sort of comes back. And then the question is, will it actually get beaten down back again now? And I don't know, because it seems like now it's not only has it come back 30 years later, but it's come back with a vengeance. And I mean, I would argue the way to really get rid of it, which unfortunately the right in this country is not incentivized to do. And when I say the right, I mean like Republicans is to label this stuff as anti-liberal and to really, because if they could get it labeled as anti-liberal, that would actually wake up the actual Democrats and actual left liberals in this country to understand what the fuck's going on. But they're well, not really incentivized to liberal. do that. They're incentivized to slap the Democrats with the label of being socialist or being crazy, you know, wackadoodles for their own political power and their political gain. They're going to keep hitting them with it. The Democrats are going to keep hitting the Republicans with the racist stick. Okay, but Sitch, so if they're not lying and you're, you're honest and they call this up anti-liberal, like they'll, they'll say, okay, affirmative action is liberal and disparate impact is liberal and, you know, protected classes is liberal, but CRT is not liberal. There's some vague The conversation right somewhere. now is not really about and affirmative action. The, 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 the conversation is whether you can make exceptions to equal protection and make exceptions generally to liberal that's principles. Not, that's not the conversation the right now. That's not the conversation right now. Chris Rufo is very smart. And there's a reason that the legislation that they're getting all these Republican state legislatures to pass is not about any of that stuff. It's about don't be fucking racist. It's all based on liberal principles. It's saying don't say that you know, black people are, are superior or inferior to white people. I guess he's I'm, completely I'm framing it in that liberal space. He's just not using the language. I think if you asked Christopher Rufo, he would say that affirmative action was racist and not but, liberal. I don't, he might say that because Christopher Rufo wants to actually, his end goal is to create some kind of weird religious theocracy. So I understand that, but yeah, he's that's smart enough right, because <laughs> well, he said people that. who oppose affirmative action. are weird No, no, no you don't, do you not, do you not know, do you not know this about him? 
You just might not be aware. Well, he, well, that well, is well, his end goal. If, I'm if not just if, making if, this I, up. I think that I'm I'm way further right than Christopher Russo. You might know. You might. So you, you know, might be. If he's creating a theocracy, maybe it'd be kind of based. So well, that's why I, I, that's exactly I understand. Be incriminating yeah, you, to me. you could. You probably. If you look into Christopher Russo, you'd probably be a big fan of his. Okay, he does want much more further right things than what he's currently advocating for. But he's smart enough to know that that's a bad opening salvo. And he knows that this woke shit needs to go away now before he starts to try to get other things uh, accomplished. Well, well, the reason, the reason why, and you know, this is, we need to kind of remember you said you kind of laid it out yourself and I'm glad we're agreeing on so much here because I, I hope the audience is benefiting from this. I really do. Cause I'm, I'm kind of here to try to make sure we're all on the same page. The reason why everyone on the right thinks we need to go way further to the right is because Christopher Rufo is aware of, of previous attempts to push back on this stuff. But what happens is you pass a few laws and the government nods their head and say, oh, we'll never do it again. And then they go behind your back and they do it anyway. A case in point, have you heard of Proposition 209 in California? Uh, not top of my head. No. It, it's, uh, it's the banned affirmative action. It passed, I think, in 1999. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know time out. Yeah. I don't know if I was in junior high. They wanted to make it legal for them to be racist again or whatever. Right. Yeah. It, it got rid of affirmative action. Uh, right. Have, have you seen the California? It the failed. It didn't pass. Berkeley? Yeah. They, they, they voted against that, though. Not the one 1994, the recent one. Oh, okay. But no. So, but I'm talking about the one in 94. Mm-hmm. The illegalized affirmative action or, or okay. racial preferences, right? Right. Okay. Look at the emission policies of UC California and tell me that those policies aren't racial preferenced. Like they obviously are, right? Mm-hmm. They obviously are doing it. Okay. Their bureaucrats just ignored the law and did it anyway. So, so I guess you have to sue them. Okay. But look, the problem is, is that the, the system is not, the system is designed to essentially ignore this and drag their heels well, on. Did, and did these they, laws what? aren't effective. Like they did they sue them? Like I don't know anything about this at all. Did they, they sue them? Did this go to court? Did this get dragged to the Supreme Court? What did they there say? Have been, there have been numerous cases that have come before the Supreme Court mm-hmm. about racial preferences. And every time they basically throw it back and say, we're not ready to decide. Yeah, but I, again, I'm not looking at this. You're, you're seeding this in this grounds of like, Affirmative action, racial preferences, as long as that exists, that America is basically open up to this sort of woke neo Marxian indoctrination. And I don't no, I'm asking find you, that at does, all. Does a law saying you can't be racist brought against an institution of people who want to do, to do the thing that you consider racist, has that been an effective strategy in the past? And I think yes. Rufo knows that it has not been. Right? What, what do you mean? Ruf, of course it Rufo has been. Rufo knows what do you mean? that he needs to go further to the right to uproot the system because if he passes a law banning the stuff, they'll, they'll change the name of CRT to something else and they'll continue to do the same thing. It, of course it's like been effective. We, we literally had segregated laws in our, in half of the country. And they said, you, that's illegal. You can't do that. And it was effectively dismantled that. It was, but this is, this is the thing when, when that was dismantled, the energy of the, the ruling class was 100% behind it. The people who well, opposed. I, I, like, not uh, really. I mean, I the ruling class, that. like not, I'm not talking about like Hicks in the South. I'm talking about the people who go to Harvard. And you, you know, there's a lot of Hicks in the South who were in Congress at the time period in the 1960s and 70s. This is, I think, the mistake. I think what, what do you mean when you say ruling class, to, I guess? When I, when I say the ruling class, I mean the professional managerial class. So this is the class of people who occupy high positions and who are educated to occupy high positions. So you're saying specifically college elite coastal yes. elite you know left-wing types College yeah, well, obviously elite, yeah. yeah of course they're not they're in, they were against that stuff yeah okay but the, the problem is if you go to most institutions and you look at their head and you look at the people who rule over that institution mm-hmm. and keep it compliant those people all come from this class so if this class wants something it usually happens and if they don't it usually doesn't happen but affirmative like- action has never been popular it Ted Cruz and unpopular. Josh Hawley and all these fucking guys, they've all gone to these elite institutions. They all go to Harvard and Stanford and all this shit, and they, they have completely different opinions. Like, I don't think it's fair to just lump everything together. Say, oh, no, I'm not talking about, like, okay, but like, if, 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 the, if the institution graduates, like, if the institution graduates 20 progressives or liberal, uh, liberal progressives who like this stuff, and then one conservative who runs for Congress... 
like that, that's still like you know, the, the, the institution is overwhelmingly still mm-hmm. 95%. Yeah. There's a, there's a big problem with on college one side. institutions so, being captured by uh, the left. Right. needs to, right needs to okay, get some teachers. Uh, okay, in there and do but, something about that. Yeah. So the institutions are captured by the left. So it's, it's not, it, you've kind of answered your question there, right? You can see why when, what, when, when the power was moving in the direction of the instant where, where the institutions were, they're like, okay, go right ahead. Right. But when, when it tried to move against it, it was, you know, it was, it was useless. I mean, affirmative action is, is a good point because although you might think it's perfectly liberal to discriminate on the basis of race to achieve this end. Most I, I don't America think it's perfectly liberal. I just think okay. it's acceptable to make the argument that because of we didn't live up the liberal principles and we had slavery and segregation, that there needs to be some balancing effect there. Well, the thing is, is that attempts to undo affirmative action through law have been completely ineffective in the past. And, mm-hmm. and, and Rufo, like, I know he, he's trying to do what he can. He's not trying to undo affirmative action at all. So that's, well, like, I don't, no, I, but I don't understand knows, the comparison. Is. The comparison is, is it's, the, the, the amount of energy you need to undo CRT and undo affirmative action is more or less the same, right? No, if, if the government, if the completely. California bureaucracy can just ignore a law that says they can't use racial preferences and do them anyway, then why can't teachers just teach CRT it, under a different name and ignore whatever Chris Rufus? Well, that's why he didn't. That's why in the laws that they wrote, they didn't say CRT at all. They just lay out the principles that they don't want to be taught. And if you look in the law of 209 i believe it just says preferences on race doesn't it was the same and we'll see, i mean but this is a you're you're we'll see what happens because you know there's going to be some test case in one of these in florida or texas or tennessee or one of these states that passed the anti-crt bills and we'll see how that goes but you're you're, you're already making some prescription here you're basically making the same argument that the crt people are making and saying you know the system you can't fix the system the system is inherently broken and nothing will change it well I, i'm just they actually, I, I'm, I'm kind of amazed that we're agreeing so much. And I, I think this is really productive. And, and I don't know if I, we I are. Get, I don't, we're not really, we're agreeing about a lot of stuff, but, but we fundamentally disagree because you're rooting this problem in liberalism. And I'm saying, no, you have this sort of neo-Marxian infiltration into liberalism. That's the problem. And you're just, it sounds like you're saying that, well, the real issue here is that liberalism allows neo-Marxism to infiltrate. Which, yeah, that, which, I mean, that isn't that, that actually is literally, I mean, if you, you, yeah, is that it your argument? A vacuum. Well, I mean, there's more to it than just that. Right? Well, but, but, is that but the, the, the basis, the base point of your argument? That, that if the you big were to paraphrase it incredibly it allows... quickly, yeah, mm-hmm. it basically comes down to liberalism. If not liberal, like if liberalism, the way the founding fathers imagined it and the 18th century liberals imagined it would not do this. But, but liberalism and sort of the 20th century idea where it's just completely vacated uh, of a prior moral system and sort of the Popperian sense, I guess, uh, Karl Popper, uh, that will leave a vacuum that will be filled by ideologies that are well suited to fill that vacuum. And well, that's, a, know, that's, a, that's, like, a, that's a slightly different topic than what we're talking about right now. With this, well, it is, it is, thing. but I mean, you asked me, so I told you, right? No, but I'm saying I, it sounds like the argument you're making is you're saying like the legal framework of liberalism and the philosophical framework of liberalism itself is what allows neo Marxism to, to come in. And I just I don't buy that argument because under that argument, it'd be like, well, liberalism is intentionally designed to be you know, it has free speech. It's designed to be permissive to a lot of ideas that are not at least inherently on their face violent. And no, you could actually, say like liberalism fails because it allows whatever the ideas that you're preaching are, that would be a drastic uh, change of the system in. No, this is actually brilliant because this gets me to sort of the core philosophical point I was making, or I, I kind of wanted to make sure we were on the same page and I hope I can. Uh, so, so I don't think that liberalism in any circumstance does this. Liberalism does this in the circumstances we put it in the 20th century. So if you go back to the 18th century when people were cooking up this liberal idea, like every one of these guys who, who were the 18th century and early 19th century liberals, and you, I can read you quotes from them that say this, that they believe that in order for liberalism to work, you would have to have a very powerful uh, basis of, of commonality. Specifically, sure, religion, 
But I'm sure if you ask these people like John Locke and, and, and Burke, they would probably say you need to have a common ethnicity. Well, where are they well. all coming from? Where are they all? Co- they're all coming from Europe, a, a continent that is basically a bunch of white people killing each other over very minor cultural or religious differences. Sure. Like that's their, that's their lived experience is that, Oh, you have all these city States and all these nations that are built around some common culture, religion, or nationality or whatever. And so if we're going to create this liberal society, that's sort of a combination of a bunch of different groups of people is going to need some strong, something strong that's going to bind these very different groups of people together. I mean, yeah, that's, cer- that's certainly obviously the context why they of that. this development was the end of the 30 years war. Hey, you, you and, guys are doing great. I just have a point of clarification. When sure. you say a common ethnicity, uh, there are different definitions of ethnicity, like American can be defined as an ethnicity. Are you well, talking in the about... year I would, I would use it. I'm using it in like the, well, I was asking Dave. Well, we're talking but, about what okay. people were saying in the eight, in D- like the Dave's, 1700s. Dave, Dave said so, in order like, for liberalism to function, you need a common ethnicity. No, I'm saying that you need to have a common basis. And if you asked what that common basis was, the people in the 18th century, they would have said first religion, and then they would have given you ethnicity by which they would certainly have meant some combination of race and just general patriotism, or what would later in the 19th century be called nationalism. Can it be independent of race? Well, yeah, because religion... Right. Like, you know, sure, uh, for okay. instance, like, for instance, mm-hmm. well, this is a poor example because this country was certainly not liberal. But but my ancestors come from a multi-ethnic country called the well, did before it got blown up, called the Austro-Hungarian Empire, which was uh, very not liberal. I should oh, it all makes but, sense now, Dave. But it we was all uh, understand it you was, now. Uh, it was it was kept together because uh, <laughs> uh, essentially it ruled as an extension of of Catholicism. Right. And um, you know, that that's what kept the Hungarians and the Germans and the Austrians all together. And then, you know, if you fell outside of that, you weren't too happy. Right. Uh, when, but I, but, I would uh, say I would just say that when when those you know people from the 18th century were talking about ethnicity, I would assume they meant far more than race. They meant the different national groups in Europe that were constantly yeah, fighting each other. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't I mean, thinking they, about like a white, black, Asian thing. They would have meant all of the above, like any particular category that you might get offended at. People in the 18th century were thinking that, I assure you. So if you know, I, I understand, but that wasn't, belief, they weren't, you know, they probably weren't I even, guarantee think, you they weren't even were, conceptualizing, no. like, it probably didn't even occur to them to think like, oh, we're going to have like a society of whites and blacks. Like, I don't even think that was even on the top of their mind. They're thinking like, oh, we're gonna have a society of Brits and Germans and French people, you know? Literally. Yeah. Like they, they would have, if the, the, they would have looked at my ethnicity as of German Catholics is a huge stretch. And they were partially right. You know, you're, when you're a Catholic dirty mutt, you got to get out of this country. You know, no, I mean, they, they, they were right to an extent that when, that when the immigration waves of, of sort of non-Protestants came in the late 19th century, that fundamentally transformed America. And, and it required a massive propaganda campaign to even be considered one country because, you know, uh, you know the, the, it, the, the the sort of ethnic basis of the country pre-civil war had been kind of fundamentally eroded. You know, but l- luckily the country was virtually empty. So there was, you know, there was no, <laughs> there, there was no need ever for there to be a conflict over resources. But yeah, th- this is what they believed, right? I mean, so the question is whether was they, were they right or wrong? Like wh- what is, is liberalism something that requires a, a certain basis outside of itself and I think that my answer is absolutely yes. You can't just install liberalism anywhere you want. You, you can't install liberalism in Sadr City or in Libya or, or apparently in Egypt mm-hmm. without it blowing up. Yeah, but that's not because, without- I mean, well, I'm not super learned on Egypt or Iraq or anything. I know they have Sunnis and Shiites and all this stuff, but I mm-hmm. don't think the reason liberalism failed to take hold in there or like in Russia, for example, where you have a lot of ethnic Russians. I mean, there's some difference there, but, uh, you know, is because there wasn't some shared ethnic or cultural identity. It's because people didn't, you can't just force, you, there's no culture for it. There's no culture that believes in the sort of liberal principles that we believe in. And I understand that why, you know, the founding fathers and you know, liberal thinkers at the time who were coming from this culture of war and and violence in Europe among a bunch of white people 
believe that to be the case. And that probably was true back then. But Mm -hmm. when you have a country like America that's existed for, you know, over 200 years, that's building on this sort of American identity, I don't think it's necessary to, at this point in our history, to say, oh, well, there needs to be some completely unified religious or racial identity or ethnic identity that binds liberalism together at this point. I'm pretty sure people buy into the concept tonight right now. Iraq and Syria are instructive examples. And you know, you can break it down. I mean, the, the real reason what liberalism does not work in those countries is because there's no trust in those countries. Right, exactly. Partially that's due because they are divided in ethnicity. That was a mm-hmm. fundamental element driver behind both the Syrian conflict and the Iraq conflict. It was primary. The second thing is that are the Sunnis and there's no trust. Groups? That I thought there was a different there's religious one, Let me get the second point and then I'll come oh, back. Okay. The second thing is, and this is the most important thing, mm-hmm. the fundamental indication about whether liberalism works is can you make a promise and have people believe it how valuable are promises in your society right now although europe had just come from a massive brutal civil war in the 30 years war what what re- resulted afterwards were a number of highly religious subcultures that had placed enormous importance on vows and promises and consistency of promises made in law. And that was a necessary substrate. And well, kind of ironically, liberalism only really did thrive in the countries that were 100% Protestant, mm-hmm. you know, uh, which is, you know, might have a, a, a different component to it, you know, that, that I might need to address as a Catholic. Uh, yeah, why, that, why, that, why do you think that, that is? Both of those things are just not present in places like Libya or Iraq. Okay. The ethnicities don't trust each other. They don't trust the promises they make each other. And so everyone who gets into power will just grab for more power. And, and, and nobody thinks that they can bind that power or the expansion of that power. You know, everyone, everyone kind of who saw this collapse in Iraq went, well, okay, well, it failed in Iraq because Iraq isn't like America. What could hypothetically be done to make Iraq more like America in the future? I took a different lesson. When I saw democracy failing in Iraq, I thought to myself, wow, I wonder what would happen if America became more like Iraq. And I think America has become more like Iraq. I think people trust promises less. I think people are fragmenting and... There's there's no understanding of of proper of mm-hmm. proper boundaries to politics anymore. So, I, I agree that obviously there needs to be a foundation in trust and trust in other people and in the legal system and all this stuff for liberalism to function. And that obviously in a lot of countries that don't have a culture based around those ideas is going to be incredibly difficult for liberalism or liberal democracy to take hold in these countries. I think Iraq might not be the best example just because it's kind of that whole situation got so muddled with the fact that the Bush administration basically told, was it the Shiites or the Sunnis or whoever to basically fuck off that they weren't. Luckily we have Libya and Syria and Mm -hmm. Egypt as other examples. This is not like, it's not a one-off in Iraq. Like, Okay, so this so, attempt is blown up like three or four times now. Right. So, you know, so you, yeah, so that's why I'm saying I don't necessarily agree, disagree with well, and Afghanistan's a good example where they had, you know, American soldiers were complaining that, you know, Afghani commanders wouldn't they wouldn't work as a team. They wouldn't all be working like an American military where all the commanders talk to each other and they communicate. Each Afghani commander was like wouldn't want to share information with other Afghan commanders because they wanted to like use that information to bargain and leverage with in order to gain their own yeah, power in the of country course. and all this other stuff. Because yeah, humans naturally do. Exactly. But this That's is not something weird about them. That's something weird about us. I I understand that. Well, it is. It's very important it is and it to isn't. understand. It, it, it is. The difference it took is thousands of years of Christianity to, to like tamp that down just a little bit. So, I would say that the difference is is sort of into what you're saying, which is that in America, at least in the military, I mean, obviously there is, there, there. I'm sure in the military, you know, military is not like a the Borg; they're not a collective. There's lots of people squabbling and positioning for power and all this other stuff. 
It's just that the rules and the framework in which they squabble and, and go for power is very different than it would be in a country like Afghanistan, right? You know, the, I'm sure there's all sorts of generals, you know, vying for positions, but they're not necessarily going to fuck over people in the middle of a war the way that maybe an Afghani commander would, because they don't have this culture and the system that they believe in. And yeah, to me, that's, it, it has power. nothing to do. It has nothing to do with like saying that. Well, the Afghani's have too many different ethnic groups or religious groups to work together. It's it's just that they don't have a culture based around these sort of Western liberal principles that we do. Well, I mean, there's this is a fundamental difference, and this is actually one of the key of all the things you might get from Game of Thrones. This is one of the key learnings, and you can get this from Thomas Hobbes as well. Uh, there's a fundamental difference between jockeying for power and trying to rise through the ranks. Uh, under a condition of order and in a condition of chaos. Yes. And that that's just so, uh, again, people before the 20th century, well, and before really our own era, recognize this difference is that once it's just like all there is is power and whoever has power is right. And like, if you can get to the top, you just take it. It's it's not just that the, you know, the the ambitious have to seize power. It's that everyone who doesn't want to be totally fucked over by the ambitious have to seize power. And, and it becomes this, uh, 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 a, a, what is a bellum obvious contra omnis as Hobbes put it, mm-hmm. uh, the, the, the war of all against all. And, uh, th- this is, this is the foundation. This is an insight you get from ancient thinkers. It's an right. insight you get from, the, but th- this is and the who wants to bring is- that back, Dave, the Marxists mm-hmm. want to bring that back. They want to, everything's about power struggles and conflict theory. They want to bring that, all that shit back. Well, see, I I think that our society is, is, is bringing it back just because a a lot of its core moral fixtures are disintegrating. So, so people have lost their religion and they've made, and and they found politics instead and and more and more year after year. I think, I think that's true to some extent that, that the people are losing religion and replacing with politics. I don't disagree with that. But that means that we're becoming a healthy thing, but that means we're becoming further and further away mm-hmm. from the kind of more cohesive society where liberalism could thrive and closer to a situation like Iraq. I'll give you an example. Well, recently. we got we so, got some years before we reach a lot Iraq levels. I assume you'd agree with that. Yeah, but like there's some bad signs. And this is kind of I want, I mean, <sighs> you're, you're, you and your audience to kind of think of this. I mean, like we're not this, at the civil war. Civil war was pretty bad, right? <laughs> we came back from that. That was far worse than this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the Civil War was bad, and uh, but but <laughs> most the, Americans could, died in any war ever. I mean, I mean, you that you could put the pieces back together again, and mm-hmm. if, if we do a repeat of that, it won't be nice either. No, but but here's 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 a little iceberg on the horizon here. If you, I don't know, I I got rid of Twitter, but I still read my friend Aaron McIntyre, and so I, I'm still aware of some of the Twitter drama, but. Wait, that was you you're, we were talking to Twitter, this right? Whole... It's not like a fake account. What? Was that you we were talking to on Twitter? It's not a fake account, right? Well, I have like a fake account that like has zero followers. No, but the, yeah, when I, we I were to... tweeting to you, that was yeah, you, that was right? Me. Uh, okay, I just want to make sure because I know like Sargon has some weird fake guy that pretends to be him or something. Yeah, no, I it, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, okay. I have a fake account. I, I try not to check it for mental health reasons. You're, that's um, a very wise idea. <laughs> and okay. But I have a friend who's really into Twitter and, mm-hmm. you know, and I like his work. So I, I'm tempted to read him and but that's just to lead into this example. Um, so the Biden administration, it's, it's been ramping up on both sides, but there's this conversation about like trans kids that mm-hmm. has appeared the last two weeks and this whole idea of groomer. Yes. Okay. So this is pretty bad because what we're beginning to, what's beginning to come into focus is a situation where half the country thinks that if you take trans ideology and give it to third graders, mm-hmm. that's child abuse. Yeah. And then the other half of the country believes that if you don't give transgender ideology to third graders, that's child abuse. I, I don't so, think that's like, an that accurate is a huge painting problem of, of what's happening. I think there's 50% of the People country have said thinks, that. I guess the question is, do they mean it, right? Well, no, I think 50% of the country thinks it's child abuse to give trans ideology to children. I think 10 to 15% of the population thinks it's child abuse to not give trans ideology to children. And the, the Biden administration said that it's, that this is, yeah, and they can be in the question of rights. 
Right, and they can be in the 10 so if, if the Biden administration and the rest of the not, country, I don't think is, that's radical, right? Like that's the that's the center left, right? What did what did they it, specifically say? The words that Jen Psaki said, I couldn't, but she definitely but that's used in, the rights. She definitely used important. the words rights in relationship to kids getting basically HRT and an early direction into into transitioning as well as getting education about it at an early age. And the word, so if you take rights away from children, that's child abuse. Well, that's not, first of all, this is the problem. It's not taking rights away from children. It's the opposite. If you want to take rights away from children, you say children should not be able to make these decisions because they're not old enough to make these decisions. That's what the right says. I I believe that, right? right? Yeah. But you're saying, you're saying, okay. So, so, according to your interpretation, I am trying to take rights away from children. Right. Or, well, okay. yeah, exactly. Sure. So the, the problem is, is that the, 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 the map is completely black and white, right? One side, no matter what side you're on, the other side thinks that you're, uh, you're criminally harming children, mm-hmm. which, which our society reserves the worst punishment for. How, 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 are, how is a society that that divided going to have a common education system? There, well, the problem is there not, has been right? this capture of because of because of unfortunately, and this is the issue. Unfortunately, because of the vindictiveness and destructiveness of cancel culture, you have basically all the psychologists and all the psychiatrists who are anti a lot of the trans identity stuff are basically being drummed out or just keeping their heads down because they're so afraid of getting fired that a lot of that only this affirmative care model of gender dysphoria is being permitted to be talked about publicly. And it's a huge issue. And we talked about this at length on Sunday. I mean, I, okay, I don't well, yeah, I, I, I understand think, how that necessarily equates. To, agree. Are you just I saying that totally this is going to cause there, but... like a big divide in our yeah, country I mean, or something? We're going to have to divide the education system. How are well, we not? There's going to, there's an already, there's a very easy solution to this problem. Okay. Sure. If nothing happens, in 10 years from now, there's going to be a massive wave of children who transitioned who are now regretting it and are starting to change back. And it's going to be the massive fucking backlash that you and a lot of other people are going to be very happy about. So I don't see that as being the issue that's going to cause the civil war in our country. I think that, I mean, we're still talking about a very small percentage of people. It doesn't uh, matter. I think if the institutions remain dominated by the but left, wait, you... they'll be able to cover that up. I assume, no, that, no, I assume you agree that you, or I'm assuming that you don't believe that gender identity is malleable. No, I totally agree that there's going to be a wave of detransitioners. Okay. So, but that's, I not just, I just be don't believe that, that be that's up. going to be something that, mm. I mean, that's going to bring the system to a head, certainly. It's going to bring all this trans stuff to a head when 50, 60, 70% of people that transitioned detransition. And are all go- and it's going to be like a big fucking scandal, and everyone's going to start suing their doctors, saying, "Why did you let me do this? I can't believe you let me do this." Okay, well, I mean, I guess so. the The hope is that three transitioners. Well, it's not the hope. I mean, it's just what's, what's going to happen. I think that before that, people are the the school system is basically going to divide into two. Like I can tell you, just as a parent, like mm-hmm. I don't, and my wife's one hundred percent with me on this, as our most other parents that are that I talk to regularly who, who I'm reasonably ideologically aligned to. Like I, I have no intention of getting my child exposed to like trans ideology when they're in second grade. Sure. Like, I don't is, blame you. Okay. So given how widespread the attitude I just said was among parents, what you're going to see is partitioning of the education institution. Yeah, in all likelihood, mm-hmm. even if eventually, you know, I'm, I'm still not convinced that will happen, but I can't rule it out. I suppose. Uh, I mean, it's, you know, it's very, I, I, it's very possible that we'll live in a situation where, for the next decade, all the red states basically start passing these "quote unquote" don't say gay bills, and all the blue states do nothing or they do the opposite of that, and it is going to create a lot more division in our country, and. You know, once the detransitioners come out, it will create a backlash to that, but it won't solve the entire problem of our country becoming more divided. I mean, if, if this is just about yeah, the fact that the people thing is, are becoming more politically divided, I, I agree with that. I think that's a big problem. I, I don't I don't well, see because, what that has to do with the foundations of liberalism crumbling into 
and that that's we should be advocating for whatever it is that you're advocating for but. because because liberalism liberalism depends on the fact that even though we have separate religions there's a boundary between where the politics starts and yes. our religions do so i'll give you this example i think this is and takes place in england i'm pretty sure this was an english thing so as you know that there were jews living in england right and okay if you go to the 19th century, yes. uh, you know, most people, if you ask the 19th century Englishman about a Jewish person, uh, they would say that they would probably regard them a little way that we guard Scientologists, like not a legitimate religion, mm-hmm. essentially. Um, but the question of whether Jewish parents had a right to raise their children Jewish was not an issue. It was only an issue in one discrete instance. There was a very famous case where this Jewish family had an Irish nanny and the child got incredibly sick at the door of death and the Irish nanny baptized this Jewish child. And then according to the state laws of Christianity, the child had to be considered Christian, had to be taken away from the parents. And this absolutely, this absolutely melted down the system. Yes, right of, of have, English see, yeah. li- liberalism because it, it put a fundamental liberal concept that had been developed after the Third Years' War against a fundamental Christian principle. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, no no one would have dreamed say forcing Jewish families to baptize their children post the Third Years' War. Before that, the, the request was not infrequent. <laughs> um, uh, but uh, but but once it had been done, it created a crisis. But the problem is, is that boundary is no longer respected. Uh, progressives see all children born to Christians as uh, essentially like the, the baptized child in, in, in the Jewish Catholic case in, in the late 19th century, uh, that they see all of them as sort of being fundamentally abused by virtue of being in this family. And uh, like that, you know, that, that almost tore society apart, that one instance that, that came from this incredibly rare circumstance. What happens when that attitude is just widespread across our ruling class? I, I mean, that's going to be a huge well, destabilizing I mean, element in our society. The, 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 I just, these things wax and wane constantly. You know, we have a, the pendulum effect is real. Things are constantly changing. I mean, if we're talking like, if you go back from the 1940s to the 1970s, it was inconceivable that even on the Republicans, that they were that we were going to go against Keynesian economics. Everyone thought, oh, you know, this is the end of economic history. The debate is settled. This is the way things are going to be. All the institutions were all captured by Keynesian economic, you know, theory and thought. And then what happens? Inflation starts ramping out of control under Carter. And then there's a gas, uh, you know, there's an oil embargo. And then inflation goes even crazier and all that. And Jimmy Carter, everyone says Jimmy Carter's a fucking pussy. And they get in you know, Reagan, who comes in and says, fuck this Keynesian shit, we're going neoliberal now. And suddenly everything becomes neoliberal, and it still is, for most part, economically till today. So I just, I don't buy this idea that, oh, once a country starts moving in some direction that's not like, that we're doomed to forever go into that path, because that's not the way any of this works. That's not what happens historically. I agree with going you logi- back and forth. I'm really looking for conciliation, so I want to emphasize that I agree with you logically, just because something has happened for a very long time in the past doesn't mean it will continue. But there's also this thing of pattern recognition that a process that you see happening every day for years and years and years and years and years is likely to happen the next day. That's all thought and, and is like, pattern recognition. I don't. Okay, great. But like people are starting to recognize patterns. Yeah. People are starting to hear Andrew Sullivan and go, gee, I wonder where I heard that before. Because Andrew Sullivan, when he heard the very same argument about Martin Luther King by the content of our character, not by the color of our skin, when he heard that argument brought against him when he was promoting affirmative action and white privilege, he scoffed at it. So why did he think that when he brought the very same argument against people to his left, that they wouldn't scoff at him in the very same way? Why? I don't understand the question that you just asked me. Well, and we're, I'm saying- we're over an hour, guys, and I have a couple super chat questions, obviously. People are asking in the chat well, for you to, Dave, make clear what you're advocating for. You're well, saying, that's what I was going to ask. If we're going to try fucking, to move, yeah, yeah. If, if we're going to, I don't know how much longer we have, but hmm. if, if we are stripped for time, because I want to talk about, because we haven't talked about it at all, I don't know what exactly it is that you're advocating for to fix any of this stuff. 
Well, this is an interesting question. So maybe we could both look at what we're advocating for in tandem. I, I'm fortunate. No, no, no. I'm just going to ask pessimist. you because I've because in this in our first conversation oh, and so on. far this it's just me on defending the great liberal tradition and liberal. No, what are you talking about? In our first okay. conversation, you did ask me this, and I did give you a few policies that would help. The I don't want a policy. Be- I want like a, a like what is. Is there a name for this? Is you know, if this is some anti-liberalism, or are we going Dugan's fourth way here? What are we actually advocating for? Okay, I don't understand. You, you don't want a policy, but you want to know what I would do to. No, is there it? some? Is there? Is there? Okay. Give me. Is there something? Is there just? Is this a series of policies, or is there some actually like a name of something, a tradition? A philosophy that is being implemented here, Dave. Like, Dave you also like accused- communism. If you say I want communism, I say okay, I understand what you want. Like, Dave, you also accused us of misrepresenting your position. So I want you to have the opportunity to make your position crystal well, he said he, clear yeah, right. here. Well, I mean, last okay, time, but like- last time, the things that you said left everyone baffled. Nobody knew what your position was. So if uh, we're mischaracterizing your position, <laughs> I, don't doubt I blame your you lack of clarity. Well, that, hey, I don't, that I'm blaming the speaker, baffled, okay? But, but I, it but left I, a lot of people I, on our, a lot of people in our audience were equally confused. It wasn't yes. just that. I, 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 I read at the some, comments at some, and the At some stage, video, you have to and... take some personal responsibility. You have to make your <laughs> argument clear, okay? You, like... I listed, you know, I did a response to you, Sitch, and you know, I, I watched that. I rarely rewatch live streams, but I rewatched mm-hmm. our live stream, and there was no. I listed about three or four policies that, if you had a hundred percent of the power, you could do, in order okay, to try to go, off. Let's, let's go over them. If you if you do, if you okay, want to shy away from a label, then go over your policy. Oh, you you want like the school of my thought? The school. I want of my both. Thought yeah, I want be, the school of the thought, and then the things you're prescribing under that. The school. school the school of the thought I generally follow are, is his, for politics would be called Italian elite theory mm-hmm. or Machiavellianism. Okay. This this conceptualizes all politics in terms of the division of power and uh, inside a system, and how that this is consolidated into ideas. Uh, you know, it has a variety of different components to it. We can go into the details, but I, I don't know what that really gives you. It is a purely descriptive theory. It is, it is not moral or prescriptive. And my, my moral theory stems mm-hmm. from Catholic social justice. And so, so those are the two, the two schools I bring oh, to it. And wokeism the, started, damn it. Well, uh, wokeism started more on the Protestant side, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to quibble with you. Okay. Yes, wokeism comes from uh, a Christian heresy. Uh, no, no argument on that side. Uh, more on the mainline side, and uh, there are a few religions that were Christian that contributed, but we're, we won't get into that. Um, so, Italian uh, elite the, theory. What are the what are the prescriptions here? The policies. The the prescriptions to to restabilize our society. Well, or just the, what it doesn't it doesn't necessarily have to be restabling because if you want to throw out liberalism, it's got to be replaced with something, right? Well, I thought we wanted to keep liberals. I thought, well, like, I do. Walking... I, I, is that what you wanted? I, I was under the impression that's not what you wanted. Oh, I would like to. I mean, if I could, if I could accomplish stabilization with liberalism, I'd do it. Oh, okay. Like, and and you could. I mean, hypothetically, you could. I mean, like mm-hmm. for instance, we, we need to completely chapter eleven all the universities and completely reform them. Like mm-hmm. they 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 need to. They need they need to essentially come completely off the government teat. They need to stop getting loans, and they need to be put online for the loans they do pay. And when they bankrupt because of that, they need to be totally reorganized with all of their basically departments that don't lead to careers downsized, terminated. We need to massively lower the immigration rate so that the immigration rate is some within some reasonable percentage of our natural population growth rate. So the the country isn't growing extraordinarily more from new immigrants than it is from the native population having children. And then we need to institute a variety of pro-family programs that incentivize childcare through taxes and a bunch of make work programs that provide jobs to young men in particular and and particularly low skilled, low skilled Mm -hmm. young men because they're the ones who really need the work. Uh, we need to create a lot of job programs to do just that. 
Well, yeah, I think so, if we and we also mm-hmm. need to completely abolish like the Equal Opportunity Commission, all the civil rights legislation and disparate impact needs to go right out the door. Uh, we need to go back to the plain text of the 14th Amendment and you know, maybe the plain text of the, the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Uh, but but I would cut more provisions out for autonomous communities that were of minority ethnicities. I think everyone should have the right to be the Amish. I think everyone should have the right to be, uh, you know, to, 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 to do the same thing the Native Americans do. Right, right. So, yeah, then we were for quibbling minority about- minority right. communities, right? Only for minority, yeah. okay. Which, first of all, I, yeah, we were quibbling about that last time, but we don't, I don't, I, we don't need to get into that. And it, this is, it, this is not close to white people, though. If the white people are like, we're all Mennonites, then they're good to go. Right. Or there has know, to be they can invent some... their own phony baloney religion, okay. but they can't just like capture New York and like gotcha. you know, put a whites gotcha. only sign in front right. of it. Right? Um, like, you know, so that's, you know, this is this is for people who are essentially uh, cordoning off away from the mainstream society. It, you know, it, if you're pos- I just want, I'm so confused because if your position is just I want to reform things to go back to liberalism in the liberal order, then I don't understand why we're talking what is actually the disagreement here? Because the entire conversation is basically just you. I thought it was you saying that liberalism is just going to keep repeating this pattern of trouble. So that's yeah. why I don't understand why you're saying you just want to go back to that. Okay. I'm so glad to clarify this then. Yeah. Yes, I don't think you. that I'll ever have enough power to do any of those things. Mm-hmm. Every one of those things I just said, hypothetically could easily be done by a, a, a you know a president and a congress that was 100 behind him and a right. supreme court that wouldn't strike down those laws hypothetically uh, but practically speaking all every one of those policies i just mentioned is like would be poison to the pmc class that rules most of the unelected government and that staffs the universities and so I would have to fight them every step of the way. And there's no way that I could mm-hmm. ever be able to, you know, get that accomplished, even with 100 percent of the political power. So you or, think not, it's 100% of the official political power. Right. Because so much of the political power of this country is centralized in areas that are not reachable by 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 newly elected individuals. Okay. And, and so and so, you know, it would require something like an FDR to implement these things. And FDR, all he, he just uprooted like liberal protections against- Right, 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 right. So, but, okay, so if this, if what you just talked about is not realistic, then what is what is the realistic solution that you're actually talking about? Well, of course, of course, there's there's two schools of thought in, 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 in my, and I don't know what's gonna happen, but the, the two things are, uh, we're, we're gonna collapse slowly and then some other foreign culture or some subculture inside our system is going to come in and replace us. Hence my interest in creating these little foundation like subcolonies, uh, you know, um, as a fail safe. Uh, but you think that there, there, you think America is going to collapse in your lifetime and be replaced by a foreign power? No, I think the most likely thing is that things are just going to get worse and worse and worse, and people are going to divide more and more into their constituent spaces. The other possibility is that some FDR figure or, or some Caesar figure just seizes power. A Caesar would be a good example of someone who did this. A Caesar figure seizes power and he doesn't abolish the system, but he essentially abolishes it and keeps it alive in name only. So Caesar basically became king, but he pretended like the Republic was still around just so the senators would have some place mm-hmm. to go and get drunk uh, you know, and, and get away from their wives. Right. Uh, but but he did this because Rome was tearing itself apart uh, because of political factionism. And and had he not done that, Rome would have descended into civil war. Well, and I don't really want to quibble about whether Caesar was right or not. But, um, but, you, but, but OK, but, but this you is think you know, in America, you think in your lifetime, America is going to be captured by a, a dictator, essentially. Practically speaking, I think in my lifetime, we're just going to be on the slow war road to looking more and more like Brazil. Okay, so you're Increased talking about crime like, rates. You're talking you know. about in the future. Okay, so you're talking about sometime in the future, America will fall to this scenario, right? Yeah, I think. I mean, eventually. I mean, things that can't go on. Eventually, things will get so decrepit that someone locally will have to fix these problems, or someone internationally will have to fix these problems, or mm-hmm. someone from inside the system will have to fix these problems, or some aggressive population. 
and the hinterlands will just come in and go like, okay, you guys are done now. We're okay. Charge. So, well, first of all, I don't agree. I'm very pessimistic. I'm far more optimistic than you are. I don't think any of this is going to come to fruition. But well, what do you see as the off roads? What do I see is the future? Yeah. I, I see. I see well, this I thought, a, no, a large off ramps. Like how? Like that is the off ramps. There's gonna the, the left is gonna do what it always does. It's gonna reach too far. The right's gonna the right in the middle is gonna get too pissed off, and they're gonna knock them back down. Democrats are gonna lose handily. Pre, they're gonna lose just as they're gonna lose bad. Maybe not as bad, but they're gonna lose as pretty close as bad as they lost with Reagan. And there's gonna be a complete realignment of the Democratic Party where they say, okay, this shit is not winning us elections. We need to go back to. We need to go back. We need to do what we did in the '80s. We need to start copying the Republicans. We need to go in that direction. That's that's what I think is going to happen. But the the my my objection to this is the eighties pushback by the Republicans was not a permanent pushback. Uh, well, nothing's it, it, ever, like nothing's 20, a permanent pushback. Okay, but they ba- they barely got like twenty years out of it before all their changes had been undone. Well, no, they got and, and, and during that time during the eighties. Well, no, like, I'm talking no, well, no, the eighties pushback wasn't about culture; it was about economy, and w- it has been that way ever since. So there has been no pushback on that. Okay, but if I were to look at the, the I mean, if you're looking at economics, right? Mm-hmm. So let's let's consider like loose money versus like monetarism versus classical economics. Like monetarism had a big win in the 1930s, another huge win in the 1960s, in which they completely redesigned this economy to be dependent on us printing promissory notes far in excess to the amount of promissory notes that are actually out there. Mm-hmm. And then in the 80s, we slightly tapped the brakes on that well, the, by raising that was the, the interest change, rates. Though. That wasn't the, the neoliberal was, change wasn't about that. It was about price stability and globalization and global markets. And it was about saying, oh, oh I know, thought, let's let's get the government so out of globalism. this shit. But globalism has only been going in one direction for the last 60 years or something. I understand, I understand that. But I'm saying it wasn't, a, it wasn't about the 1980s economic shift was the shift towards neoliberal economic policies. Okay. It wasn't about saying, oh, we, you know, we're going to not print money anymore. We're going to, we're printing up too much money or anything. That wasn't really the thought process when Reagan came in. That wasn't, the, when they, one inflation of the was hitting, Reagan it wasn't was because we were printing. When that inflation was, was hitting, it wasn't because when inflation was hitting, it wasn't because we were printing too much money. It was because labor had way too much power and it kept demanding pay raises in an exponential factor. And then when they got hit with the oil embargo, it made everything spiral out of control. Okay, so the, the thing is, I don't see those things as fundamentally different. If you, you know, uh, if you can, the, the, the money has to be set to the amount of products in the market. So if the products go down, like if you're, if you're literally in charge of the printing presses, right, you're going to get inflation unless you ease off those printing presses. You know, so th- those two factors aren't unrelated. Well, in the well first of all, instead of getting into a, a debate about fucking MMT, which is irrelevant to this yeah, conversation, we, we... my only point okay. was that you asked me, where does the off rank go? And I said, they're going to do what's going to happen is what's already happened in our history, where the left goes too far in a direction and then there's a pushback. And they went too far in the economic direction. There was a pushback. And we've been captured by the right wing economic theory, basically with some small caveats in other directions, basically since the 80s. And I think we're now reckoning for that from a cultural perspective. The left is going to push the culture too far. There's going to be a massive pushback from the right, and the Democrats are going to start losing all elections, and they're never going to win again until they shift policies away from all this woke shit. The right-wing economic theory I mean, we're already setting that up. The right-wing economic theory didn't win, Sitch. That's what I'm telling you. Because the right-wing economic theory, the neoliberal the entirety of the Federal theory, Reserve to be a giant fraud machine. The neoliberal economic theory, which has been conceptualized as the right-wing economic theory for the last 50 years, okay, has won. And that means free trade. Yes, free trade. But free trade was not classically considered right-wing. Okay, it was... I, okay I'm not... I, the ne- that's why I said the neolib whatever word you want to use. It was what the Republican Party in our country advocated for and has been advocating for until yeah, recently open markets, nation with, building. with populist Trump coming to fruition because of the housing a... crash. Okay. Okay. So the, the thing is here, though, Sitch, and, and this is the reaction is 
I see very few of these trends. This is the Marxist. Permanent. This is the same crap that the left, the bread tubers and leftists do, where they say, "Well, can you just tell me the argument against this that, so I can learn everything like, why that's not wrong? Marxism is is right wing." Liberals are really right wing. This is what you're doing. You're saying, well, the neoliberal economic policies that the Republicans have been pushing the last 50 years, it's not really right wing. OK, that's a ridiculous argument. I, I know. I, well, I mean, the, the thing is, is I, I, I see if, if your definition is like neoliberalism has been increased, like free trade, had the, 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 the Roosevelt administration, well, the, the post-war administration was all about that. Uh, no, all of the Democrats in the 60s were all about that. No, like, it wasn't. Oh, my God. It like protectionism? So so this was this is about protectionism. That's like that's the. Since you can't go to bed, you have to stay here. And... I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> you, you, you think FDR was a neoliberal? Is that what is that the position that we're. He was advocating for neoliberal economic. FDR was advocating for neoliberal economic policy. FD, FDR, FDR imagined, well, I mean, like you, FDR during the New Deal. I said F, the post-war Democrats. Mm-hmm. Like the post-war Democrats, will you agree that make, the post-war Democrats make, were pro-free trade? Make your point, so free, let's move free, on. Free, just saying that we want to have freer trade with other countries is not the entire basis of neoliberal economic principles. Okay, so okay. The, the thing is, is that, but I feel like we're getting into an argument over names. This is this, we are, but you started this argument over this names. This is my point. Your my argument point is that the relies, trend, no, your argument, the, the political trend, your the, the big argument, argument changes, changes, relies, relies, yeah. your argument relies on saying this country is moving in this left wing direction, and it's the brakes aren't stopping. And I'm saying, well, no, there's been shift. There's a huge shift back to the right. And now you want to say, well, it wasn't a right wing shift. It's actually secretly a left wing shift. Neoliberal economic policies that the Republicans have been pushing for that we've all been living under for the last 50 to 60 years is actually secretly not a right wing policy. And that's a ridiculous argument. So would so so would you say that over the course of I mean, so how long has it been since the end of World War Two? Like you, you think of since the over the course of the set seventy or eighty years it's been since World War II, that that this country has just been back and forth, right and left. There, it's just been an equal and opposite reaction. You know, there hasn't been any broader trend. It's just been it's just been back and forth, and 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 any any policy that could go in one direction could easily be reversed by the next one. Well, that dip- so that's it, just, well, this, this is the problem. Your, I, this is not this my is history. The right? problem. Like, I'm just being absolutely no. honest. No, this is the no. You you you're. This is the problem. You're creating a very a very shoddy framework for how to look at this. Okay, because if you want to say, oh, there's what direction, what trend direction are we going in? Well, we could say, oh, well, that depends where the starting point is. Because if we're going to go back to the original conception of left and right, I guess we're going very far. I guess we've been going nothing but left because we're moving away from a fucking monarchy, which yeah. was the original definition of being on the right. So it's, that's why conceptualizing is the way that you're doing is stupid and useless. And you're doing it in order no, I, to try to I, craft I, I believe, this argument. But the, the thing is, Sitch, it, the, the question is, can we notice a one-way direction in history? And can can we identify what's causing it? And furthermore, have can been we moving predict about what's going to be in the future? A direction towards liberalism. Right. Yeah, obviously. So I, if I you're guess, guess my, my case is on the left, if, then yes. Then I guess we're going a left wing direction and the brakes aren't stopping. I guess. Well, I mean, I, 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 I anything could happen. You know, I'm not clairvoyant. Right. But I mean, but like if I if I'm if I'm studying a system and it has this tendency Guys, can we I, get I'm a gonna, clarification like, on actually liberalism? Actually, recognize that, right? Like, I'm going to try to learn what that thing is, no, right? I don't, this, just, the, the, just, just for the audience, is, can we get a clarification on liberalism? I, just, I, I'm I, thinking the, individual rights when you say liberalism. Are that's you, what I'm. Are you yes, both individual say, rights. thinking the same? Universalism thing, under the law. Right. Okay. Blah, blah, no, blah. I, I actually, I, I, I don't think that we're getting more liberal. I think we're getting more progressive. Do you accept the definition that, of liberalism as individual rights, Dave? Okay. We're, again, we we're totally. Yeah. That that's. A fine. Okay. We totally yeah. sidetracked the fucking what we were talking about again. Okay, and you keep doing this. Mm-hmm. We were Look, talking about I'm what you innocent, were innocent, supposed honestly. to be advocating for. I asked you. You gave me. We're going to be advocating for a bunch of things under a liberal framework. Which I said, if that's all you're advocating for, why the fuck are we having this stupid conversation? And then you said, oh well, no, because our society is really going to collapse. 
So I just this is why I feel like you're being so look, fucking evasive, Dave. Look, if, what we, the can, fuck if we can are, do this, why are we having this fucking conversation? If you want things to be fixed within a liberal said, framework, let's calm down. I'm, like, I'm sick like, I don't understand of, why you're so I'm frustrating. Sick, I'm frustrated because every time you do this thing and it fucking drives me bananas. OK, where all you do is you want to say, I don't want to stand for anything because it's harder for you to defend a fucking position. So you're going to keep saying, well, haven't I told you, you Sitch, you, you create a framework. So no, this is what you're doing. You're saying, Sitch, you create a framework so I can sit here and tear it down like a fucking neo-Marxist. I'm going to deconstruct everything you're doing. Sitch. Let me deconstruct everything. And every time I've I say, and every time I say, what are you constructing? You change the fucking subject. That's I've, why I'm I've literally in this very stream, I've given you policies that I would implement if I had. And, and then I said, and I said, if if those are the policies that you're implementing under a liberal framework of liberalism, why the fuck did we spend the entire part of this conversation earlier talking about why liberalism doesn't fucking work? You're because talking I about don't both think, sides of your I don't fucking think, mouth. I don't think, Sitch, calm down. It's because I don't think, I don't see how this is so hard to understand. I, I can tell you what I would do if I had power, but I also can change hats and say, I don't think that I'm ever, that people like me are ever going to be in a it's position a, to do that, do you, right? Do you understand like, I don't, the what's, I, Can you explain to me what's contradictory okay. about those positions? Yes. Do you understand like, the contradiction? I, first of all, I, like, I don't, I have not done anything to like anger you, Sitch. Just, I, I, I don't honestly no, don't listen, know what I've done to like, I explained you why, so I explained clearly why I'm angry. You cannot accept that or not. I don't give a fuck. Okay. That's up to you. I explain what you're doing is pissing me off. And I think it's intentional. I but no, it's not. it's not. I'm really trying to answer your question. Okay. I don't understand. Do you, like, uh, what? This is the contradiction. Why are we having a conversation? And we had a conversation before this. We had a conversation on Twitter about this. Why does it seem like every time we have a fucking conversation, you're coming at it from the position of liberalism will fail and liberalism doesn't work. This seems to be the entire core of your argument. So yeah, then when liberalism I ask you, will not wait, fix so, these so then when I That's ask my, you, wait a minute, absolutely hold on, anything hold else. on. My perception of what you're saying in all of our conversations is you saying, Sitch, liberalism will fail. You're being a stupid moderate centrist. And I've heard you say this shit. So don't tell me that this isn't what you're saying. Well, I, then, of course I said that. And, I'm saying, I'll say that to okay. your face right now. Sitch, so liberalism then, is going to so fail. So then when I ask you, okay, what is it that you're advocating for? You say, oh, I'm just advocating for liberal policy, Sitch. And then I say, what the fuck? Then what are we talking about here? No, you, okay, so I would say, I would say that like, no, the, the thing is like, what? What what do you mean? I, I have no idea what you're telling me right How now. How can you? Why are we having conversations? Our system, about our system is incapable of making non-liberal moves outside of itself until I, it collapses. Of course, it is. Any the two ways it collapses doing or something comes in to replace it or just degrades away, which are the two things I told you, right? Why, I said that, right? If I said you like think the two ways you is can going to system. fail. Why are you advocating for liberal solutions? That's not an answer to my question, then. I'm not going around and, and, and trying to run for Congress on the platform I just laid out, what, 15 or 20 minutes ago. I understand ago. that. But I'm, so, oh my God, I'm going to fuck. I'm saying, I, I, can <laughs> you explain me happening. why you're so angry? I had no idea. Like, this is do you, so, Adam, this do you, am I, am I insane? Like, this Adam, no. is, am I insane? Chat, am I no. insane? What's happening? What? It's very simple. You're, I mean, you're, what, I don't what, understand. What, like, what is, is the so hard question I'm not answering? Like, what? I'm, I'm honestly, so you're, you're saying, okay, so let me try to get your position here. If you give me some rope here. So okay. I will, I will, you want I will calm down. me to answer is, is like, I'm, I'm honestly trying to understand this. Hell no. He's you're being evasive. That, Don't calm down <laughs> okay, now. What are you doing? <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Evasive. Like what ha I've literally given you. The, the, I do not view the politics as I'm listen. I'm gonna. I do not breath. view politics as like something that I project my wishes onto. Okay, that's fine. like I could. I could. I could secretly. Want, I mean, I could. I could tell you that I would really like it if everyone were Catholic and we could all be Christian and we could have a society totally based around my morals. That's never going to happen. Okay. So mm -hmm. I can tell you like different eventualities of history and what I would hope to see from all of them. But okay, so I can't predict since I can and I could tell you what to do, what I would do if you mm -hmm. gave me a hundred percent of the power, which I gave you five examples of policies of what I would do. Well, those, those right? few policies but, that you laid out were the opposite of liberalism. That's why I wanted a definition of liberalism. Oh, they were. Do you consider the five policies well, no, to be the opposite a, a, a of liberalism? Catholic, a Catholic, some sort of Catholic moral system. Yes, it's way against individual freedom. You have fucking no freedom in a theocracy. But yeah. Well, the. There's no way that liberalism is going to work without 
basically having a very religious and moral people. Okay, let, let me let and me so let me ask know, a question here. Maybe I don't be, understand your position. Okay. Sure. Is your position that liberalism will not work, or is your position that liberalism works and we should strive for it in America, but there needs to be some unifying idea around religion or society or something in order to make it work? Okay, yeah. Liberalism has to have a strong unifying idea in order to work for I, any I understand that's your position, time, right? Right. I'm asking now, you in terms of America, do you think America should continue to try to be a liberal country or do you think it should skew that for something else entirely? I think that, it, so, so if I were, do I think that Americans, I think Americans shouldn't really, I mean, I think that, if you're an American, you should try to secure your community rights as much as possible. But I would not expect that liberal rights are going to be respected very much That's in the future. That's not what I'm asking you for, though. Like, if I read Dugan, he doesn't want, he wants something different. He says, fuck liberalism, okay? If I watch Quackademic Agent, he doesn't fucking want liberalism. He says, fuck that, throw that shit in the trash can, it's bad, okay? Like, that's what I'm asking you for. Do you want to have America continue to be a, a country under liberalism, or do you want it to be something else? I I want. Th- I see. This is this is just a fundamental disagreement. I would use liberalism if it worked, and I would use non-liberalism or monarchism if it worked. I'm 100 practical on this matter. Now, if I were president, I would mm-hmm. feel duty bound to operate within the bounds of liberalism. Okay, and, and I could not do otherwise, right? Because I said an oath to uphold the constitution. So I'd feel duty bound to operate within some confines of liberalism. Okay. So- but, but, but as, but, but as just a practical matter, right. If it's death under liberalism or life under monarchism, I'll pick life under monarchism. Okay. So, well, okay, sure. We'd all choose life over death generally, but so, or civil war, you know, that would be a more, you know, likely situation, right. Well, it depends what the civil war is about. I will go into civil war to defeat the Marxist. But if so, if if you're saying that, okay, so you're saying that you have you don't really care about the isms. You're just a total pragmatist. You just want whatever your end goals you want, and whatever system gets you there gets you there, right? That's what. Yeah, I, I care about moral principles and religion, but I don't see politics as being something that I'm not duty bound to use one political tool over the other. Well, I mean, that, that is not my, prohibited my by support my of liberalism isn't out of duty. I just think that's the best framework for for freedom and systems and the things that I want to be enacted in the world. Ah, so here's so a disagreement. I don't have a duty and this is why you're it. frustrated. I only see systems as being suitable for certain times in history. Liberalism okay. was suited for the people of the 19th century. I do not think it's suited for us anymore. Okay, so now, that's okay. So that's what I'm asking you. Okay, you're saying liberalism isn't suited for us anymore. So what is suited for us? Some system that maintains a semblance of order and prevents the society from further politicizing and moving to an all-out civil war or, or chaos. That's what system needs to be in place. And if okay, we can use liberal tools to mm-hmm. get there, I'm all for it. Okay. I just don't see how we can. That's the problem. Okay. So, all right. So you don't see how we can. So are you advocating for a more authoritarian control of our culture by a central elite authority or something? You know, do, is it, what, what like, do you mean advocating? I mean, this is, you well, mean is like, you, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not operating. I'm not running a revolution. I, okay. But this is what I mean when, okay. This is what I mean when I say it really feels like you're being evasive here. I'm not running a fucking revolution. I'm not running for Congress. Okay, so I can you, still you say the things I want to happen. You want to know like what, whether if if a strong man came to power and he, he shut down these problems, would I support him? Is if, that yeah, if, if 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 some guy came if if uh, someone called not Dave came to be president? Yeah. OK. And they say, fuck free speech. We're throwing that in the trash because we got to fight the woke neo-Marxists. We're getting rid of the First Amendment. And instead, we're going to, I don't know, do we're going to do Christianity now, folks. You know, we're going to have some sort of Christian dogma implement the country. Would you be like, yeah, fuck yeah. Or would you be like, oh, that's terrible. I mean, I think that I would see it perhaps as a necessary evil. OK. I mean, I certainly like freedom of speech. I think we could keep that. But if 
if our moral fiber deteriorates, there's not going to be freedom of speech. And I think that the the, the mark of the mark of a of a proper king versus a tyrant is whether he uses the minimal amount of force necessary to accomplish his aims, and whether he respects his people, even the people he disagrees with. So and are, I think that if, the, if the ty- mm-hmm. if if the if if the strong man in question started callously and, and humili- humiliating the Wokies, even though they're my they're my opponents, I, I would I would get seriously concerned. The the the, sure. the the proper strongman has to use the absolute minimum amount of power and the absolute softest touch in order to properly realign things so that the country can get healthier. I mean, I, I don't, I wouldn't disagree with that. I just think that's fanciful to think that that's a realistic scenario at all. So what what is and now that that's Completely. fair enough. Like, what do you think is well, a realistic? So- I, I actually you, think I actually think that we're going to have to collapse a lot more before that happens. Right, so, but so, yeah, so I don't think that, I'm not expecting anything like that to happen, like in my lifetime. Okay, but so but, you're, but you know, it sounds like you're more like sort of like South favor, Africa that will happen. It sounds like you're sort of in favor of like the Mencius Molbug private monarchy conceptualization of our government. Kind kind of, he's a big influence, but the mm-hmm. problem with his ideas are that I, you can't. Ha- I mean. Corporate merchants are, are temperamentally unsuited to be monarchs. That's mm-hmm, never right. happened outside of like, a few merchant republicans, maybe like pirate republics, maybe. A, a, a monarch that comes in has to come in with the mandate of heaven, with respect for religion and morality. That needs to be his banner. And his message needs to be you know, I am the king of everyone, I'm for everyone's interests, and this is how I'm going to restore morality to your families. And I'm going to do so with the absolute least amount uh, of, of rancor and the least amount of, of, of uh, being an absolute psychopath, right? Right. The last thing you want is someone like a Hitler, or, you know, so, or a Trotsky. Like ideological people are not fit for, for this role. They have to be people who are operating for the good of everyone and working to restore order, first and foremost. So- if you had to choose, I guess, between living in a fixed liberal society versus a, you know, Christian monarch society, which are you going to, which lever are you going to pull on that one? Well, it depends what stage we're on right now. Like not all monarchies are created equal. Do I get to see what's behind the skirt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is like you a get, random selection. It's not random. It'd be like your version of whatever dave's best liberal america would look like versus dave's best uh monarchy america would look like well obviously i want the liberal one because that's like we're saying obviously i I would have thought you would go with not the liberal one. well but the, the thing is is like the the monarchy is only there because liberalism stopped working Right, like uh, liberalism is awesome while it's operating. Okay, it well, just it just okay. it just grades itself and, and crashes like we're doing okay. right now. Right, like that's you know I, I don't want to you know it, it if people could be moral and healthy and, and and live their lives with the absolute minimal amount of force and self governing themselves to boot, uh, that would be a paradise. But the problem is I don't think that's how humans operate. And the problem with liberalism, and you'll, you'll see this in books. Okay, let like, me say the best realistic liberal society. <laughs> I don't mean like a utopia. Well, I'm, just, I'm talking about like, is, is you, know, the, you know, the 18th century happened, right? Like there, mm-hmm. there, were, there have been devout liberal societies in the past. Right. That's possible, right? Yeah. So, you're, so yeah. Okay. So you're saying you prefer that over living under a monarchy. That's, you know, what I, that would be your perfect monarchy. I mean, self-governance is pretty cool. I, okay, I kind of like, I mean, like that. I don't, this is good. I don't know this because if you recall the entire context of the original conversation mm-hmm. we had, which is part of this conversation, was that you were supposed to come in and, and, and uh, I don't know, carry water for a quackademic Asian, okay? Who I assume has a very different conception of the way he wants things to be than you do. I don't think so. You so, don't so the, think the, so. the school, the school um, of thought that we're part of, the Italian leader school, the, the, the most famous book that details its thought is called The Machiavellians by James Burnham. Mm-hmm. And its subtext is radical lovers of liberty. 
And uh, the, the idea, and this is a very Machiavellian one, is, is that you can have liberalism descend into chaotic tyranny, and it's way more oppressive than, than living under a, 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 a king that does not want to interfere with you. I, well, you know, that, I mean, that's, no, that's kind of a weird conception, isn't it? Not, not really, because that, 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 that difference has been faced many times in the past. No, but I mean, saying like liberalism could be more oppressive than a king that doesn't want to interfere. It's like, well, anything could be more oppressive than a king that doesn't want to interfere. Like that. So what? Well, okay. But like, but th- this is, this is backed up by a, a logical path by which liberalism degrades into chaos. Like so, oh, so is the argument that liberalism will always degrade into a more oppressive system yeah. than a mo- Okay. That's a slightly yes. different statement. No, no. I mean, I, liberalism is, liberalism is not going to oppress me. What liberalism mm-hmm. gives birth to is going to oppress me. Like, like, I, I see. Like, I see. Yeah. Yeah. I mean like, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Like liberalism is the absence, which the poisonous fungus grows into it, People don't get malaria from still water, still water is right, around right. mosquitoes come and breed in it. And then I get malaria, but the only way I can stop getting malaria is to drain the still water. Oh, I, yeah, yeah, I, understand. I think Liber- we, I think we got your position. Well, let me, I just want to say, I just want to say this, that, so if the, this is what I still don't understand, because like, if the position is that liberalism allows, is still water that allows the mosquitoes or whatever to, to, to form, it's like, sure, that could be more oppressive than a monarchy, but monarchy isn't still water. Monarchy is the 10 foot, 100 foot giant mosquito that could kill you at any second or protect you from other little mosquitoes. So I don't see how turning things over to monarchy is going to solve that problem at all. Turning things over. I mean, the classic example is Caesar, right? So Caesar was a monarch and he, he we was, don't have time for examples. Let's, no, uh, you cut, the, the, like this is let's move on. We, 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 we nix this example. But, well, but, we're going but into the hour two life, here. This we have example, some questions. Well, okay, let, okay, let, him, let him give his Caesar <laughs> okay. example. Okay. It was this very example that got nixed the last time. The classic example that everyone thinks of when they think of degraded li- degraded democracy or degraded liberalism versus monarchy is they think Caesar versus the Senate. So the Senate was like this quasi, not really democratic, it was more oligarchic, but you could say the same about our system as well. It was the system of divided power and politics in Rome. Now, the problem was is that by the time Rome had become an empire, the sort of religious and cultural constraints on the Senate that kept it manageable, and also the territorial constraints on Rome had been completely evaporated. And what people would do, what senators would do, is they would start wars so that they could fund their political campaigns, and they would kick up huge local domestic civil wars, like mobs of people fighting each other in the streets, uh, so, so that they so that they could secure power for their friends by by pivoting off the conflict that was created. Now, the introduction to the Caesars was the death of the Republic, but it stopped that process from continuously going on because it filled the power vacuum. Yeah, yeah. Now, one Caesar mm-hmm. could be fatal to you, as many Christians certainly learned during that time. But for most people in the empire, one Caesar who made consistent laws and made promises you could count on was way better than a bunch of little people trying to grab the throne and backstabbing each other and kicking up, uh, you know, democratic rebellions in the city, burning each other's houses down every five or 10 years. Yeah. It's just, it's not a, having the just King come in is not a permanent solution because the just King is going to die and you're going to have the next King who could be a total piece of shit. The next King who could be good, but not as good. And the next game could be even worse. A total piece of shit. And yeah, I just don't that, that see is how... a flaw of monarchy, yes. Right, but so... It is a but, flaw of monarchy. The, the Romans got to work that, for about 500 years before that's, that no, became no, but a problem. It, it, it doesn't make sense to me to say, oh, the flaw of liberalism is that it will allow bad actors to come in and fuck shit up. And it's like, okay, that's the exact same flaw. That's the, literally the exact same flaw in monarchy. Only I would argue it's, it's even it's, easier because you're it's, giving it's, it the keys is, of power over to a single person. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you and say that what you just mentioned isn't a problem with monarchy, but it's a fundamentally different one. And it's one that can be managed much more easily with rules in place. Like I, I said, for instance, don't the, agree. The, Roman Re- the Roman Republic would have a massive civil war like every few years. 
before the Caesars came in. After the Caesars came in, the Civil Wars didn't kick out for like another hundred years, or another sorry, another like three hundred years actually mm-hmm. in any meaningful way, right? Uh, so, so they had a system where that persisted for like a hundred generations. Okay, so right? civil war Sorry, isn't 10, the 10 civil war isn't the only metric here of living in a, a good society. <laughs> Obviously, civil wars are bad, but it's like okay, if we live under three hundred years of horribly oppressive kings that are too oppressive to have a civil war, that's that's not a good thing. Especially I, I when a civil that... war is the only way to de- to depose generally an unjust king. Oppressive kings are bad. But there's only one thing worse than them, and that's chaos. Sure. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, hu- humans, it's it's well-known fact that humans will prefer a king or a tyrant to chaos. Of course. This is not an improperly evolved, um, this is not an improperly evolved human instinct. Uh, this is a properly evolved human instinct. This is knowledge that the human race has taken from thousands and thousands and thousands of years of operating in, in real political spaces. <sighs> Republicanism, okay. yeah, we have to move on. Keep it, so, but okay. it, I mean, a king will always be preferable over chaos. I agree. A king will be preferable over chaos. Yeah. All right, well, we can end it there. <laughs> we can end it there. Did you want to read a super chat, Adam, or I was think there a question or something? I, none of them really seem to be super related. Relevant? They seem okay. to be more commentary. So. Mm. Which I think we can handle on our own. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Um, All right. Well, uh, if none of the directors mail, just let you guys have the rest of the evening. Thanks for having me on. I hope that I really actually didn't mean to be evasive, Sitch. I just think our perspectives are really out of line. I try not to project my ultimate desires onto history. Mm-hmm. I try to ask myself what I would do in this situation. And, and I think that might have irritated you. It was certainly not my intention to irritate you. Okay. So, it's, it's just, it's hard. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it. It's hard because I'm sure you know that we live in a, in a world, especially in a political environment where many people are intentionally evasive and hiding their power levels. And you're, you could be right. We just have very, very different conceptions of things that lead to miscommunication. So. I, I am very right wing, by the way. I'm not hiding my power level when right. saying this. Like I would accept, I would accept a monarchy over uh, over uh, a, a liberalism that 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 forces transition on children, or you know, against their parents' will. Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's okay. not a question. So I'm not hiring my power level there. The one thing I just want people to consider, though, like you know, Sargon is is a liberal, like. He's somebody that I think I, I respect a lot because he's basically a conservative, right? Uh, th- there's got to be some. He he thinks that we can arrest this process and and sort of like go back to how things were, like in in the '90s, maybe. I think that's mm-hmm. his idea. Uh, this conservative impulse, in my opinion, has had a very, very, very bad track record. Uh, and and the, the 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 sort of the leading indicators that I look at for for mapping liberalism's decline, we could argue if you know something else we call neoliberalism has has done something differently than some. It's had a very consistent downward directory, and that's what I'm very deeply concerned about, right? And so I'm just, I'm not expecting to see a revival of liberalism in my lifetime, not least of which we can pull young teenagers. And their respect for freedom of speech is like rock bottom compared yes. to all other previous generations when pulled at the exact same age. That does okay. not bode well for liberalism. Like we cannot mm-hmm. expect to have this. And once you're all right with taking you know, the free speech away from the other side, then all bets are off, right? Because if you come for people's kids, like they're, they will go to war over that. And that will cause an absolute state, Hobbesian state of bellum omnis contra omnis and and then you know it's people will choose a king over that and everyone will not not just crazy reactionaries like myself just before you go um to, to open the pandora's pandora's box mm-hmm. do you have any terrible ukraine russia takes <laughs> oh yeah i've got Russia terrible repression of train okay i hate to inform you of this uh, are but, you on the Russia pro-Russia has, side uh, of the equation? Yeah, yeah. Um, Putin has actually been replaced by a robot of Putin. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, he, he just does Putin kind of things. He's been machine algorithm. I see. So you can't call anything Putin does bad. Okay. You can just react to him. How would you optimize your policy with regards to Russia? Uh, I think I'd create an EMP device that could be detonated 
over where the Putin robot exists to knock it out. Well, well, you and Jen Psaki in the State Department. Yes. Is that, yeah. see, I think I think the State Department and and the Biden administration are, are playing this game to unseat Russia. And I fundamentally mm-hmm. disagree with that. I think that we should play this game in order to minimize the humanitarian catastrophe that's on our doorstep. Okay, that's a pretty basic. That's not a terrible Ukraine Russia take. That okay, but I spi- think the moves not very have been spicy, wrong. But no, but but the moves have been wrong because if if we were playing the game with my objectives, mm-hmm. we would just let Russia have the territories he's already conquered because there was no way we could have ever defended that territory. We've guaranteed Ukraine would have never joined NATO. And, you know, taken our lumps and then just said, okay, well, we'll reinforce like Hungary and Poland. When you say the territory that we take, do you mean all of Ukraine or just mean Crimea? And I mean, Crimea, Donbass? we would recognize Crimea as part of Russia mm-hmm. and the Russian ethnicities. I mean, Putin has already offered peace on those terms. And regardless of whether we want to give him peace on those terms, at the end state of this war, that the territorial concessions he wants He'll have anyway. So do you with think the added benefit of having mm-hmm. both Russia and the West, and more importantly, Africa, because they depend on Ukraine and Russia for food, plunge into total chaos. So you, you think that if before the war, if Ukraine said, We won't join NATO, uh, you can have Crimea, we'll give you some section of the Donbass that you want. Yeah. You think that Russia would not have invaded, and that would have been the end of the scenario. Yeah, I think that concession would have been met. Yeah, okay. I think they would have. I don't. I, I don't agree. Met. I don't think that would have stopped them. But anyway, all right. Well, well if it wouldn't for... have stopped them, then what would have changed? I don't think anything would have changed. I think they yeah, would have Ru- Ukraine anyway. would still be in civil war, and th- we still would not have actually fought a hot war to defend it, right? So no, I think is, they would have invaded. I think nothing would have changed. They would have just invaded. They anyway. would have invaded the not. They would have invaded the non-Russian section. Yeah, and like, like they're so, like, I mean, like they're doing right now. What do you mean? Okay, so th- so then it w- that would still just gives us what we have right now. Right. Yeah. I, I don't think it would. I'm, what I'm saying is, if they would have capitulated to those demands, which by the way were not the demands of Russia going into the war, if they had dip- capitulated to some these demands, I don't. It wouldn't have stopped Russia from invading. So you don't think we could get peace if we capitulated to those demands now? No. Well, well, maybe now I don't know. Maybe now that Ukraine has fought off Russia, oh, maybe they. Can okay, well, you know, may, well, that sounds like a good way to not have a huge global. Well, but food not really. Shortage. Well, not really, because what are they going to do? They're going to pinky promise swear that they're not going to invade the rest of Ukraine, like they pinky promise sweared in the '90s, and then yeah, did well, it anyway. Know, now, I'm a Machiavellian, so there's a very simple reason why Russia is invading, because they think they can get away with it. Uh, Russia legitimately can claim all territory that we are unable to defend in a realistic fashion or we're unwilling to spend the blood to defend it the question is how much of your crane are, are you willing to start a global food crisis over Here, here's answer your for myself is none mm-hmm. here's your well it's I, too I would late. much rather it's too late all of ukraine to russia mm-hmm. than have like millions of people in africa die right. and chaos erupt throughout the world because you know right so if so we didn't Russia want to look, has if we didn't Russia, want to look here's your peace Russia, plan. I think here's we should find cheaper your ways to do that. Well, first of all, we, we can't Ukraine. remove the agency of Russia and assume they're a mad dog. Yes, I can. Okay. Well, absolutely. Okay. I absolutely you can. Me. I, yeah, I, I won't. That's my entire philosophy is that he, we should absolutely remove okay. the agency. I think Nobody that's, has agency I think that's except silly. Us. I think that's silly. But here's your peace plan. Okay. Russia says, listen. Ukraine can join NATO, but we get Crimea and we get Donbass. That would be, I'd say, okay, that makes sense. Because then the rest of Ukraine would actually have some security guarantee that Ukraine is not going to invade them like they promised not to do on a pinky swear in the 90s. Because right now they have no guarantee if they don't join NATO whatsoever. This is so boring. But we can. I want to kill myself. No, the, 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 the key thing here with both Syria, <laughs> Syria and Ukraine are the same thing. Okay. If we fought a big civil war in Syria and killed millions of people for functionally the same thing that we could have accomplished by just letting Assad take control over it without all that money and all those lives, right? Assad won anyway. All right. Thanks for coming on, Dave. Congratulations. For on, you Dave. did uh, zero whataboutisms, which is a record for the channel. So That's true. That's true. Well, I'm impressed. I, I hope I clarified as much as possible. Thank you very much for having me on. Yeah. All right. Have a good night, guys. Take Bye. care. Bye. I knew that would stick in your crow. Why? Why did you have to do that? <laughs> Jesus. I was God. like, let's bring up Ukraine, Russia. Oh I was just curious. God. I was curious. I was curious as to what direction you're going. I'm not, I'm not that surprised the, by the Curiosity by the didn't answer. only kill the cat, it killed the stream.
Jesus. Uh-huh. Oh there you go. God. There you go. Hi, you just listened to a clip from the Sitch and Adams show. If you like what you heard, you can listen to our live show right here on this channel on Sunday, starting at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Eastern. And if you want, you can super chat us. We read $20 and up super chats on the show and then do a follow-up stream on the following Tuesday where we read the rest of the unread super chats and interact with fans of the show. Subscribe to this channel right here to listen to the live show or to listen to more of our awesome clips.